Hi. Hello, Sepilok. Yes, it is an early start. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold yes. on. There we go. Yeah, very early. 7 a.m. I've been up since between half one and 2 a.m., something like that. And, uh, yeah, things have been a bit not good lately. How are you? I'm streaming. I mean, good thing with YouTube is there's a catch-up service, so anybody who wants to uh, watch it later, they can. I'm just slowly making my way back to the bubble, um, doing a bit more bioscanning. So, I'm in a system now, two jumps from where I was on the last stream, and uh, we've got three planets with bios, two of them which may be interesting. This one, more so. What have I been up to? Uh, basically just recovering from an incident uh, that involved me getting a little bit too overexerted and I, I did myself a little bit of a mischief. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get into more detail later, but I'm kind of still recovering, and this is just kind of a a, 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 he, a brain test, a head test, to see if I can manage the game. Now, I should be kind of okay, because, well, uh, my sleep patterns are out, so my head's a bit dodgy already. But, um, <clears throat> yesterday I, I did hook up the wheel because I, I bought, Next body to map is 1F. I bought, um, May host marked biological. Le Mans, I bought Le Mans Ultimate and I wanted to give it a go. It's a tricky little thing and I wanted to see if I could turn any laps, see if I could, my, my head could handle it and I was okay for a little while. Um, yeah, so, maybe I'm getting there to the point where I can game. My head's not been good because I starved it of oxygen. <laughs> so I'll be even more crazy than usual. Oh, Sapilok, wow. I hope she's okay then. Ah, well, give her my best wishes, man. You've got my and you've got my best wishes. I hope everything goes good and uh, she's on the mend. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's been tough. Does it? This map isn't changing, is it? So it doesn't matter where we land then. Ah, uh, I, I don't know what the incident was, but I'm not going to pry, but, uh, yeah, if that's good news, Sepilok, then that's, that's awesome. Certainly not a patch. I mean, I, my, my thing probably isn't a, a, a patch compared to what she's going through. Illnesses, right. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I was valeting a car, okay, and it was a big, it's a big car, it's an estate car, it's a big one, and I hadn't valeted a car since last time the weather was good, which was basically, I don't know, probably September, August, September last year. And I don't have the most active of lifestyles, let's just say that. And that's, that's an understatement. I'm not a very active person. I used to be, I've never, I've always been okay since before I came here, but since coming back to the UK, I've not had a very active lifestyle. And I did this car, and it was a full internal, external valet detailing everything. And I worked my ass off on it. 
and uh, by the end of it I started getting dizzy and having to take small breaks as you get the dizziness that you get like a head rush dizziness you know when you get uh, if you're ever bending over or something and then you stand up quickly and you get that head rush and you get a little bit dizzy that that but yeah and I did finish the car and my, my back was aching and everything and I, I was basically just exerting um, exerting myself too much uh, but I finished it and I, I delivered the car which was only what six seven doors down from me around the corner I just took it down and just delivered it and I had to walk back which is about I don't know a minute minute and 30 seconds to get back to my house and I was dizzy the whole way that head rush dizziness the whole way and it, it was difficult to walk as well because my legs were aching and everything from just standing up crouching down for five hours and cleaning inside the the boot and a state car you know the back seats down cleaning inside there crouching and stuff and I was walking back getting dizzier dizzy I didn't want to stop I just wanted to get home and I got in my house my first thought was go upstairs get into bed and I couldn't make it I just collapsed on the floor in kind of a fetal position with a dizzy head and I just lay there for 15 minutes waiting for it to go away and then I made it up to bed and and slept and I've done a quite a bit of sleeping since that was Tuesday and uh yeah, basically dizziness is when you starve the brain of oxygen. And uh, it lasted a while, so my head's still recovering from that. Uh, the next day my my back was just killing me like freaking hell, all hell. Uh, but that took about three days and I was okay again. But my head is still, I, I would describe it as delicate at the moment. So, here I am, and seeing what I can do, basically. Um, I don't know whether I've done myself any permanent damage or injury or whatever. I don't know. Oh, great. I've got the tussock here as well. Um, yeah, well, not like that. I've not had it as bad as that before. But I reckon if I'd been exercising in the last six months, I would have probably breezed through that car. No problem. Um, but I do, because I've got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, now and again, I do get the head rush. Sometimes if I'm lying on my bed and I suddenly think, oh, I'm going to get a cup of tea. Sometimes I can just get up off the bed. Say, I don't know, one time out of ten, it'll, uh, it'll be a thing. But, uh, hey, Simondo, yeah, underlying problem, I don't know, I mean, beyond knowing that I have high blood pressure, high cholesterol, I, I don't know of anything else. Bacterium aurus is scanned. But, base value 1 million, minimum sample distance. My blood pressure through my life has always been really good, always. First partial sample I've always had spot on blood pressure. Um... So, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't do anything. So I want to put my, my high blood pressure down to just lack of exercise, basically. And I reckon if I exercised, I could lower that blood pressure down. So maybe I should. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. I mean, they've they've monitored my blood pressure in the past and stuff like that and... Yeah. But I haven't I haven't been to the doctors for this particular one. I don't know what to do here guys. I don't want to move the ship. But I need to if I want to get more bacteria. But there's tussock everywhere. 
What's the range of the tussock? 200. I should do that first. Ah. Uh, yeah, we'll do that first. Yeah, so that's basically it. I think it was exertion. Just did too much. After, yeah. What I want to invest in, which I think would be good for me, is a, a treadmill. Because that way, doesn't matter what the weather is outside, if it's cold or rainy or windy, whatever, won't matter. I just get on the treadmill and I could walk and walk and walk and walk. And that's cardio. It's exercise, right? And it would help me get in shape. So, yeah, I think that would be a good idea. Get myself a little treadmill. So I'm going to see if I can hunt for a second hang one and grab one of those. I'm trying to avoid blood pressure tablets because I know once you're on those, you're on them for a, quite a while, aren't you? Um, but if they'll stop me from having something more serious, then yeah, I'll do that. Whatever it takes. Commander KSY, hey. Ram Ramparil and Anakin. What's his face? <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> what is it? Oh, yeah, the first four letters of that tells you it's a heart thing, doesn't it? Oh, man. I don't know, because like I say, throughout all my adult life, Every time the doctor's taken my blood pressure, every time, it's he's always said, oh, spot on, spot on, perfect. You know, I've always had good blood pressure through my life. But just lately, all of a sudden, while I've been a lazy, lazy as in lack of exercise, uh, there's been a rise in blood pressure. And I guess if you couple that with sometimes I eat a lot of junk I don't eat a lot of shit food but I do eat a lot of like junky stuff as well what's this thing in front of me now what have we got on here it's stratum right ah uh. Oh, executus, Ex executitus of Borg, executitus, no, execute, executitus, executitus, I don't know how you would say that, but. Executitus scanned. Executitus. Okay. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. Right, we've already scanned the bacteria at the front of the ship, but we're going to cancel it. Yeah, walking 20 minutes, yeah. Sometimes though, I'm just, I just can't be asked to go out, you know? Which is why I think a treadmill would be handy, because it's, it's right there, it's inside, and I can just switch it on and just do 10 minutes to start with, 15 minutes the next day, 20 minutes the next day, stay on 20 minutes for a week, then work up to half an hour. You know what I mean? And then maybe do two sessions of half an hour, one in the morning, one in the evening. As as I... Yeah, don't forget the car, Rusty Jesus. As I um, progress. And that, that could be enough, you know? I could just get a, just some second-hand treadmill for like 100 quid or something. And although I have seen cheaper ones, but I want a, I want a decent one, you know what I mean? Um, and then just you know get back in shape that way I also have one of those cheap ass uh, rowing machine things um, which I can use as well but I think I would probably have to have a bit of time on the uh, treadmill first so yeah 
I'm going to have to do something. And I'll give that a go and see if that brings my pressure down. And if it does, happy days. If not, well, I'll have to take some medication for it. But anyway, I've never, like, the dizziness was just really bad. And like I say, I didn't collapse on the floor, but I kind of did. But I, I, I collapsed on the floor, like, voluntarily, you know. I didn't just, like, I didn't have, it wasn't a case of having no control and I just went. No. I decided, you know, once I got in the corridor, my, I knew I couldn't make it to the bedroom, so I thought, if I go in the lounge, I can lie on the sofa. Couldn't, couldn't. I couldn't take another step. So I just dropped myself onto the floor in the corridor. Grabbed, I had a towel nearby within arm's length, thankfully. So I grabbed that, used it as a pillow. And I just laid on the corridor in the house for about 15 minutes. Just trying to be quiet and stuff like that. Lowered myself to the floor. Kind of, yeah, I just let, I just let myself drop. And I just stayed there for about 15 minutes. And then I, I stood up and held on to the banister or whatever you want to call it and just walked up. And I needed to wash my hands as well because it was full of different car products. And then um, got into bed and stayed there. And I've been largely in bed for since Tuesday. I haven't been out, I haven't done any shopping, I haven't done anything. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over two And I've been able, thankfully, I've been able to be okay looking at my laptop and stuff, because laptop screens are not that big a deal for me. Um, but coming to the PC and sitting at the triple screens here, no way. My head would, my head would have just said, nope. Not a chance. And then, what are we today? Monday. So it must have been Friday. Yeah, Friday. No chance. No chance of streaming on Friday. Uh-uh. My head was just not in that space. Anywhere close to it. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have been able to do it. I could probably have maybe looked at the screen for five or ten minutes and that would have been it. My head would have just said, get off this PC now. Uh, but the next day, Saturday, my head felt a bit clearer. So, yeah, that was all right. And then Sunday, I, I, I took a little chance and I put the wheel on the desk and I did, a, I don't know, about 45 minutes maybe, sim racing, just a little, um, because I bought this new game and... Uh, I was kind of okay, you know, it wasn't too bad. I was able to lap and crash and <laughs> that game, that Le Mans game is ridiculous. Uh, they didn't build in rear grip. They just, put, they just put grip on the front. So yeah, so I figured it, sim racing would test my head more than anything. So I thought, well, next to that, Elite Dangerous is calming and easy and therapeutic by comparison so well i say therapeutic it's it's easy to cope with is what i mean uh, i'm gonna skip the bacteria just for now because there's some more stratum over here so yeah so that's been my week it's obviously did my heart race oh yeah all the time my heart, my heart can race when I'm when I'm uh, just lying in bed. Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. So I, you hear it in your ears. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Um, yeah, <clears throat> it's a strong old thing, though. But like I say, I, you know, I don't, I don't do anything to harm it, other than, uh, other than not exercise. I don't do anything to harm it. But, um, yeah. First partial sample collected. <clears throat> uh, 
<clears throat> I wouldn't mind an ECG thing though. Wouldn't mind having one of those. I've not had one of those in years. And the last one I had was okay. <clears throat> So I think, yeah, just some easy exercise to start with and then, oops, I'm too close, didn't listen. Yeah, just some easy exercise with a treadmill or something to start with and then work up from there and uh, get my body a little bit more in shape, you know what I mean? Try to live a few years longer. And it doesn't help knowing that that the age I am right now is the exact age that my father died of a massive heart attack. So yay! That's a memory. Worse, made worse by the fact that I, I watched him die in front of me, you know. But he did. He did smoke. He liked to. He liked to go out on a night and drink with the guys you know, at the working men's club, and he used to eat a lot of fried food, and I don't do any of those things. So, yeah. Well, Seppi, look, I don't know what to say. If something happens, it happens. <clears throat> you know? I don't think this would have been an overnight thing. I mean, not e not even my back was able to work itself to uh, no more pain overnight. My back took three days. And, you know, exertion headaches can take two or three days anyway. Minimum distance reached. It's like, it's not a headache. It's It's kind of that, you know, when you get that feeling all the way across the top of your head, like like it's a, a stress thing, or, um, yeah, well, it's just like across the top. It's not a headache as such. It's just that the nerves have just been frayed to hell, I guess. But yeah, regardless, ooh, sugar. Did I... Did I do that? Nope. Um, yeah, so regardless, my head's better today than it was two days ago. And it was better two days ago than it was two days previous. Complete. So, something's on the mend. So I'll, f I'll shop around for a treadmill and... Uh, See if I can uh, live for a, a year or two longer. But anyway, it's nice to be back in the game. Not this particular game as such, but games, like, in general. Now, I do have a bacteria there, but did I just pass one? Um... Yeah, spent a lot of time being tired, a lot of time being asleep. Which, <laughs> that's kind of a good thing. You can never get enough of that. Yeah, thanks, happy luck. Yeah, I'll see the doctor if I'm, you know, I, you kind of know, you know what I mean? You feel it. Uh, but I will in order to get my blood pressure down again. I just want to avoid the blood pressure tablet thing if I can. I want to give, I want to get a treadmill and give the exercise a chance to bring the blood pressure down, you know. I want to give it a chance to do it first. If it can't, then let's do the tabs. You know, that's the way I'm thinking. Alright, so I want to do this bacteria, not the one that's in front of the SRV, because it's uh, 500 meters. Thargoid vomit. Exercise, yeah, I think exercise can do quite a bit, actually. Partial sample collected. But, as you can imagine, having gone through that dizziness outside, I'm not confident enough to go for, like, drive, drive down to the pond, 
because there's a it, the pond you can walk all the way around it and it's a nice little lap to do I'm not confident to walk around there in case I get dizzy again halfway around and then I can't make it back to the car or something but if I'm doing it in the house on a treadmill I can stop whenever the hell I please and just say right that's enough and then do it again another day and maybe go a bit longer and stuff like that and just ease myself in Mr. Gain Damage hello matey how you doing? Early morning gardening. Oh, my back, Simondo. Jesus freaking hell. You know, it was kind of weird because I was, I don't know, five, five and a half hours maybe on this car, detailing this car. And uh, ah, you get yourself in all sorts of positions, you know, crouched inside the car on all fours, hoovering. Uh, and then back out again, then crouch, and then up again, and crouch, and down, and bend, and this, the whole thing. And my back hadn't moved like that in almost over half a year. And uh, when I finally made it to my bed and just got to sleep, I slept around five hours, and... I needed to get up, I needed to pee and stuff like that, so I got up and I was okay, just got up, went to the bathroom, came back into the bed, stayed awake for a couple of hours, and then I slept for another five hours, I think. Well, when I woke up from that second five hours, holy freaking Jesus, my back, <laughs> my lower back was absolutely killing me. And I had to, you know, like make turn my hands into. Let me see if I can picture this. Turn my hands into fists, put them like you're trying to. You're lying on the bed. Put them behind me, and push myself up to get out of the bed. And you know, I had to go try and get out in a kind of a sideways push myself up. Man, it was painful. Oh, geez, and my thighs as well. Uh, next day the same. Next day, I think, was a little bit worse. <laughs> My back was just really bad. So, and then, yeah, kind of like three days later, my back was kind of okay again. And I still feel a little twinge now and again. So if I put my back through that, you can imagine what, my, what the nerves in my head went through. Because <laughs> obviously you feel pain in your head and it's not... It's not um, your brain, because you, you can't feel pain in your brain, because um, your brain doesn't have any nerve endings on it or anything. But you do have nerves, right? So any pain in your head's on your nerves, the, the nerves in your head, basically. And obviously those were at the end of their tether. <laughs> with what I put it through. So yeah, did a little bit too much basically, I think would be the, the way to describe it. Ooh, hello. What happened there? How did you switch fire groups? I don't have a button on my controller to switch fire groups. How have you managed to do that? And switch modes. What the hell? Uh, yes, happy birthday. If I'd known gain damage, I would have said it yesterday. Happy birthday, man. I hope you had a, a decent one. A healthy one. I have the same thing, gain damage. On, on my birthdays. My family will say something and then maybe, maybe my next door neighbour. And that's it. That's it. It's all part and parcel of not being in school anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, how am I doing on... Wait a minute, let me get out a sec, because... I've just lost. But, yeah. Oh, what the hell? Did I not... I didn't sample it, see? 
Second partial sample collected. Still, it's been good. I, I spent a lot, lot of time watching some stuff on my laptop. I've watched, I'm binge watching through now uh, The Equalizer, the TV series from 1985. And yeah, I've been watching videos of people I subscribe to, keeping my spirits up and stuff like that. But yeah, it's been an anxious time this last week. And I was totally unable to sit at the computer. No chance. But yeah, getting better. Mad Jog, 54, hello. Yeah, I've not had a heart attack or anything like that yet. Um, I can sense one on the horizon though. <laughs> but, yeah. We'll see. Lurking with an earbud. <laughs> okay, game damage. Oh, happy birthday to you for yesterday. Happy birthday to you for yesterday. Happy birthday, game damage. Happy birthday to you for yesterday. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was half tempted to do it in the style of Marilyn Monroe, but I didn't want to embarrass myself. reached. You've travelled over 500 He's meters from previous... Probably stops. taking his earbud out now. <laughs> right, so we're just looking for one bacteria and there it is. Is that the one I scanned before? Uh, no. Stop, 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 stop! I had the thrusters on for some reason. Yeah, so I've picked up another sim racing title and I'll be trying it out. I mean, pff, the physics of the car is a little bit strange. So if you like to see uh, rear end spin outs, stay tuned. Because there's plenty of them. Okay, so what have we done? Oh, well, that's everything. We've scanned the planet. Now there's something very similar on the next planet, F. Yeah, let's go do it. I just need... complete. I just need to be playing in a relaxed state at the moment. without leaving the boarding area. How do you mean, the boarding area? Because you have to kind of move around for it, don't you? Especially when you've got like three different species. Oh, the blue cone. How the hell do you do that? <laughs> you have to land right, right on it? Oh. That's like an extra complication for me. Right, so we're on planet E, we're going to planet F now. This one? Yeah. So, other news from the week. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Don't know if I have any. I, I know I've gained a couple of new members, like non-gifted ones, but actually 
members and we got the subs to 7141 now so thank you to those people for the support um, I just checked actually today I've got between the patrons and the channel members it in, including the gifted uh, channel members as well it were totaling 51 that's like brilliant unbelievable only one blood pressure tablet yeah yeah I mean if I was ever to go on them I would hope that I could exercise my way down to a point where I could then come off them again and I know the, the, the two things that are most important when it comes to blood pressure and cholesterol and stuff is exercise and you know assuming your heart is doesn't have any like defective issues or whatever would be a uh, exercise and diet I, I could improve my diet I don't eat badly you know like yesterday it was rice and uh, rice and fish and stuff like that so um, I don't really do fried food the only time I ever do fry something is like if it's an egg for a fried egg sandwich that's it basically these days uh, if I ever have like chips or french fries if you want to call them that um, they're, they're oven ones they go in the oven and stuff like that and I try and avoid I try and buy stuff with as few you know that marking system they have on the food the with their tabs that have got the green and the orange and the red I'll try and avoid as many reds as possible you know so I'll I'll, I'll do those kind of things um, but yeah if you eat a lot of well if you eat some crap diet can take some of that off yeah but yeah no I've had a lack I, I would say I've been lacking exercise for a few years now certainly since Covid 20 that's 2020 isn't it we're in 2024 now so I have some catching up to do oh wow my jock wow that sounds dramatic man you know what that reminds me of and I, I don't I'm not putting it down or anything but you know because if you think a, a car's cooling system is pressured as well right and if if, the, if it gets over pressured you know like one of the rubber hoses that goes onto the radiator that they can just they can snap or they can just like you say they can tear off if the if the pressure is bad in there and stuff like that and it reminds me of that because it is a it is a pressured system isn't it and then you may have like in that pressured system in the car the weak points are those rubber hoses at the top and bottom of the radiator and something's going to give right if if something's wrong there if anything's going to be wrong it's going to be one of those tubes and yeah it's as you were mentioning there blood pressure that's crazy the, the blood pressure can can do that man that's a little bit scary as well but <clears throat> i'm glad you all sorted though man that's uh that's the main thing <clears throat> we just got to trundle through life, haven't we? And just <laughs> try and make it through to the next day. <laughs> oh, man. All through my life, right, ever since I was a kid, for no particular reason I can remotely think of other than I used to like Heinz macaroni cheese and stuff like that. Other than that, I can think of no particular reason why I picked 57 as my favorite number and I don't even know what that means favorite the number I like to look at the most <laughs> what does that even mean favorite number it's not a lucky number 57 and I well I thought well Heinz 57 varieties did I get it from that maybe Maybe I just think looking at that number looks cool. I don't know. Well, as I said, my dad died at 57, but I had that number in my head way before then. And that's how old I am right now. So, 
E. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe I it's a sign. Maybe I picked that number because this is my final year, guys, and I won't make it to November. <laughs> Stay tuned. The final live stream will will be a, a death stream. Uh You're not annoying, man. The only time you'd be annoying is, is if I time one of your messages with having to do a loop of shame. <laughs> then I'll get you on it. <laughs> wow. Right at the beginning of COVID. Oh, so it was fairly recent then. Yeah. So do you, like, as a result, would you, like, have an exercise regimen or, like, a thing that you do every day? Because I certainly need to do something. The most exercise I get in the house is... Oh, the most I... <laughs> what did I say that for? The most exercise I ever get during the day is walking up the stairs in the house. That's what I meant to say. And sometimes even just walking upstairs can give me a head rush. Not every time, but it can happen. Getting out of bed too quickly can give me a head rush. I've never been in that in that situation before though. But we're not getting any younger, so like a car, I suppose the older it gets, the more maintenance it needs, right? The more you have to look after it. And I should I should think of that when I'm, you know, worrying about myself. So we've got some backy there. We've got some stratum over there. Oh, massive bacteria there. Or is it just that the other one is small? So we've got stratum there, stratum to the right, but that's not 500 meters. Or is it? Yeah. Yeah, that's less than 500. <laughs> yeah, as long as I don't get stuck on the down, so I wonder. You know, you go down the stairs and you think, oh, that's it, I'm too tired, I can't even get back up again. I mean, sometimes I get it where if, I, if I'm walking for maybe, I don't know, two minutes. This is how out of shape I've been. I can walk for maybe two minutes and then I'll suddenly get aches and pains in my hip area, kind of where the ass, the butt area, so to speak. Just achy pains. And if I keep walking and keep walking, it, it'll eventually go away and I'll be just fine. I noticed it when I went down to my sister's and I took Rusty for a walk and I don't know we got down the drive and across the road and my my legs and ass was hit or hips I should say was aching and uh, I carried on and I don't know it ached for maybe a minute or two and then it went away and we were fine. We just did the whole walk and we were out for about 45, 50 minutes or something. So it's a little phase that my, I, I just, <laughs> my body needs to warm up. Yes, yeah, sit on a step. But if you're dizzy though, I think it'd be a good idea as well, what you've said about the stretching as well, like just to get out and just, because I know, you ever do that where you're lying in bed and you just go, you just have a stretch, the whole body, you just go, Aah! and you do that stretchy thing. It's very rarely I can do that without pulling a muscle somewhere. <laughs> oh, guys, I am I'm on the brink. The worst one, the worst pain, though. Well, yeah, the worst stretchy pain, I think, for me is the one that it starts under your armpit and it goes to where the, I don't know what you call it, the peck. 
the, the, the man boob. Yeah, that part of the chest up to the armpit. Oh, man. Why is that so painful? The other ones, like, you can get them in your legs and you just straighten your leg out and you'd be all right in a couple of seconds. But the one that goes under the arm and to the chest, when that muscle goes, Jesus. <laughs> Why am I going to the ship? Yeah, when that muscle goes, oh, you know about it, guys. Oh, yeah. Yep. Did I not bring the car? What the hell am I doing here? Oh, I didn't, did I? Okay. Yeah, that's a killer one. It lasts, I don't know, 15 minutes or something, 20 minutes before it goes away. Poor. I didn't I didn't I get that on a stream uh, last time I streamed or something something similar yeah weird I'll tell you what though I'll tell you what you you can get some slight cardio um, sim racing as well especially like if you have the force feedback wheel the direct drive wheel that I have um, where it takes, you know, a little bit of effort to turn the wheel. If you turn the force feet back up, you know, you really have to, you really have to try, you know what I mean? You have to put some effort in to turn the steering wheel because it gets really quite heavy. Um, like in this Le Mans game, I had to turn it down because it was, the steering was too difficult to turn and it's all on magnets. So you're fighting magnetism and the, Inside the wheel where the steering, let's let's call it a steering column. Inside there, if you picture the steering column going through the middle, there's no contact. There's, it's not contacting anything on the outside of that steering column. But then around that, orbiting it, is a load of magnets. And they're really, really strong. Because they're powered by the electricity, the mains. And you're fighting against all those those magnets. And it's... It gets strong. It does. So if you do like half an hour race with one of those, you, you, you're you sweating and... Uh, yeah, yeah, mad joke, I guess. Yeah, like that. And um, I don't know if it is a cardio thing. It must be, I guess, because I'm, you know, I get hot and sweaty. No, it doesn't matter if my room is cold. I have to take my jumper off when I'm sim racing because it's, it's just... It's too, uh, I get too hot, man. Yeah, so just crank up the, uh, crank up the, the, the force feedback gain to 100% and, um, yeah, enjoy. <laughs> so it does have its benefits in that respect. Can you imagine the doctor saying that, though? My recommendation is to do one hour of sim racing every day. Sure, Doc. <laughs> no problem. Uh. This look. These uh, stratum here look like camouflage. I would love a Series Three Land Rover. I think they're awesome. Even the older ones as well. My dad, my dad, when he was in the army, he used. To, we never had a car. In our, I was always a car guy. I've always loved cars since I was like four, four years old. You know, always been into cars, and we never had one in the family. And uh, but my dad, when he was in the army, he drove. I've seen him sat in this vehicle, this big, it was a huge dumper truck thing. Um, it's kind of like uh, four wheels that are like, I don't know, three times bigger than a human. You know, just big wheels and a great big shovel on the front. My dad's driving that. And he drove Jeeps and stuff like that. But we never had a car. So I never knew if he could. I think he maybe had one before I was born. I don't know. And... Uh, because I was so into cars, it was always my dream to think, right, when I get to 
the age I can learn to drive. I'm going to learn to drive. I'm going to buy a car, and I'm going to take my dad around, and we're going to drive to the Lake District and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, never got the chance. Never got the chance. So yeah, never mind. Such is life. Minimum distance reached. Whoa, slow down. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Right, this will be our third sample then. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you know what's really weird though? You think about it. You know how just something that can happen in your life can just change the course of your life? Oh, it's such a weird thing to say though. But I, you know, if my dad had lived longer, I wouldn't be here doing this channel. It's weird, isn't it? Because the things that happened in my life after he passed away kind of put me on this course towards, you know, going to live in Gibraltar and getting into getting a job in IT, having my own PC and then gaming and then YouTube channel and then here I am. It's weird how it all pans out, knowing that, you know, I would have probably stayed in the UK. Had he, had he not passed away? It's so, it's, it's such a, it's weird. Is that the butterfly effect? Is that what that is? That just one little thing that can just change. It's, yeah. Oh, I think I need to get out the vehicle again. Right, Tussock. Oh no, we moved, didn't we? Yeah, 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 we moved. From where I originally landed, there was Tassock. Hey, Denzel, Australia. Hey man, where about? That's cool. I'd love to go to Australia. <coughs> One way ticket. Be quite happy, I think. <coughs> Living in Oz. We need little, little hairy plants now. Oh, there we go. Oh God, I, I'm not using the maneuvering thrusters for some reason. Hey, Kremlock. All right, Simondo. I need to go shopping too. I uh, oof, badly need to go. <clears throat> Victoria. Ah, okay, cool. I know somebody. Uh, my well, I say my next door neighbour. When I when I lived in the UK before, when I was younger, the guy who lived opposite me, we were good friends, and he moved to Australia, and he went. Oh, what's the name of the place now? Geelong? Am I saying that right? Yeah. G double E L O N G. Geelong. That's where he is. Wherever that is. Affix the rate he scanned. Base value 4447100. Minimum sample distance 200 meters. New codex entry. Tussock Serati. Green. Please be Tussock. Partial sample collected. Please be Tussock. Yes, it is. Now, please be 200 meters.
uh, Apple TV or phone turns up in your analytics with Google Premium. I'm talking about Apple TV. Phone turns up in my analytics with Google Premium. Um, I, I don't know, Denzel. I'm not really sure. But yeah, if you can't afford anything, don't you, you don't worry, man. Don't worry about it. You're not obliged to send me anything, really. Oh no, I'm not 200 meters. Um, but yeah, Google Premium. I don't know, but yeah, go I mean, YouTube and Google, they're all tied together. You know, uh, Kremlock. Distance reached. Oh, you've traveled over two hundred. Yeah, we can do it. Previous sample. We just couldn't do the front ones. Um, do you mean Elite Dangerous in general, Kremlock, or you mean the Odyssey part? Because the Odyssey part, I think, looks just like playing on a massive TV in VR. But the Horizons Elite Dangerous part in full VR is freaking awesome, actually. Elite Dangerous is almost made for VR. It was just, it's so good. Right, so we just need to sample one tussock and then the bacteria. And the other one I'm not going to do out of principle because the G planet is Bacterium vesicular and Fonticulia campestris. I can't even bother with those. Google Premium. Is that the same as YouTube Premium, though? Oh, kickbacks from Google for me watching you. No, uh, monetary kickbacks? No, nothing. But obviously the more views and stuff like that, um, it helps the algorithms, kind of moves me up the results, I guess, I think. Yeah. But other than that, no. But yeah, we're good. Or click on an ad. <laughs> Can't seem to get rid of ads these days. Um, yeah, getting a VR setup. Yeah, I mean, try one out. It's if you know anybody with one, Kremlock, have it, give it a go. Elite great in VR, but the uh, the Odyssey part it's it's not full VR. It's kind of large flat monitor thing. But you should, yeah, I was just about to say, you should test it out first. Because not everybody takes to VR. It's, uh, some people get motion sickness and stuff like that, so. When you first put one on, it will be disorienting for a little while. But you're, you know, like with me it was. But after about 20 minutes or so, my brain kind of worked it all out and I was okay and now I can play Elite, I can sim race in Elite Dangerous, I don't get nauseous, I, I can get disoriented or discomfort but nauseous, I've only felt nauseous once in VR and I was very tired at the time so it's probably played a, probably played a part in that um, but in general it doesn't bother me you know like I say, sim racing is pretty heavy because you you know you're always looking around, looking into corners and stuff. In fact, if you saw the video I posted, where I did two laps in Canada in VR, posted that like I don't know last week. From previous you you get an idea of what I'm looking at as I'm approaching a corner. You'll see you'll see me looking into the corner before I get there and stuff like that. And that's the kind of that's what you do in, in real racing. You you look into the corner well before you get there. And it really gives an impression of what the driver is looking at when he's driving in a straight line, but he's not looking straight ahead, <laughs> you know, and in terms of like with the corner coming up, you, you're looking directly into it. And it's those kind of movements on, of the head there like that might give people motion sickness but to me I don't get anything 
Oh, yeah, of course. On premium, you don't get the ads. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's true. Right, so that's two samples of... Two samples? No, we're empty. We've done the tussock. Okay, I think my pro... Collection there you go. It's, it's really lagging there. Okay, so now we need some backy, which would normally be short for tobacco. Backy, smoking the wacky backy. But in this the game, it's bacteria. I don't see any. Don't have any weapons with a scope. Right, we're gonna have to take the ship and fly around and sample some bacteria and it's it's only a one million bacteria, but it does translate to five million later on. See the way I'm working this out is that when I get back, I want to have I want to have some ranking on my exobiology, some decent ranking on it. Uh, so that's why I'm doing the plants. But also the credits as well. Because if I get back with some really good credits, I can think about my next ship. You know, for Oliver Hardy, I'll be able to get maybe like a a python, have enough money to kit it out or, you know. Yeah, it's only a couple of minutes, Kremlock, the, the racing video. Two or three minutes, I think. Pee -wee. hey man, I got you on the credits. I noticed you, did you actually do that membership? It wasn't a gift one, right? It was a it was an actual one. Um, but yeah, I've got you on the actual members credits. I've added you and the looks player, I think was the other one. Uh, but thank you, yeah. Yeah, it's... It's not been a great week, <laughs> but improving, so, yeah. I think if my heart was going to give out, it would have done it during my cleaning of the car. Racing at 110 miles an hour. Not the car, my heart. But no, it held out. Oh, and it didn't also help that I had a cup of tea before I started the car, cleaning the car. But as I said, the car detailing took me five and a half hours. It was a full interior and full exterior, and I was five and a half hours on it. At no point during that, and it was a quite a mild day. The sun was out. It was a really nice day. Um, at no point did I eat or drink anything during that. So that was another mistake. I, I should have had water with me and I should have been drinking water during the thing. And I didn't. So I didn't do anything to help myself. Let's just say that. I really didn't. And, um, and my, my head and body punished me for it. I'm, no, I'm not back in the bubble. I'm around 60 jumps away. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. Using the using the Elite Dangerous Router, I am uh, I'm 60 60 something jumps away. 61 maybe, um, and I think what I'm going to do is while I'm finding undiscovered systems. Although this system wasn't undiscovered, but the previous one was. While I'm doing that. I'll carry on using the Elite Dangerous route. The moment I start getting more closer to the bubble and every system is discovered, I'll switch over to Spanch and just get myself back. But yeah, shenanigans definitely. Um, definitely want to be just out doing this stuff. Get Getting some... Um, Credits. I just want to build up the credits, really. And seeing as how I just want to take it easy now, it's probably a good time to just not rush back and just let myself find some plants and weeds and lichen and moss. You travelled over five hundred. 
500 meters from previous sample. Gardening. Space gardening. Jesus. <laughs> Frick, it didn't make me jump. Just look at that rock. I didn't even see it. Oh, do you want to know the, the, the absolute pisser, though? Is that after five and a half hours, close to five, it was just over five hours anyway, detailing that Second partial song nice detected. BMW M340 estate touring. What the hell is that? Oh yeah, it's that weird noise. I think that's just YouTube celebrating. <laughs> yeah, after all that, it absolutely pissed down in the evening and all the next day. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. So the car's probably got spots on it. I, I, It has got a hydrophobic coating on it that I put on. Um... It's a nano coating because because I ceramic coated the car a couple of years ago. I had to put this uh, nano coat hydrophobic coating on to top top up the, you know, just to keep the hydro hydrophobicity on it. Uh, so I'm a, I'm hoping that when it did rain, it would have just literally just fallen off the car. It would have just trickled off it, at least off the sides, maybe not off the top, but it is a nice car. It's it's a it's it's a black, it's it's black BMW M M340i Touring. Um, yeah, it's nice. It is nice, very nice. <coughs> uh, right, we need one more bacteria. I couldn't, you know what? I couldn't figure out <coughs> until I saw the switch uh, or the button. Because the car is just like a, it's it's a steering wheel and a massive screen. I could not figure out how to, every time I opened the door, bing, and the radio came on. And I couldn't, and you can talk to the car, right? And I couldn't remember whether it was just, you have to say, hey BMW, which I think that is the case. It's hey BMW, I think you have. Then you can tell the car, you know, turn the radio off, turn to this channel, blah, blah, blah. You can just tell it. So um, and I have done it before when I was doing that car. The last time I cleaned it, the radio kept coming on, and I put the ignition on, and I just said, "Hey BMW, turn the radio off," and it turned it off. But it wasn't doing it. I couldn't, and I thought, "Oh no, I'm going to turn this off. I can't leave it running all the time." And uh, it turns out that the the owner had uh, turned off the microphone. But then I realized that there was a little twisty knob underneath the screen that you can just push. And I don't think it actually turns the radio off. It's It's got that power symbol on it, you know, the, the circle that's cut, split at the top and it puts a, you've got a line, a vertical line, it looks like a power button. But it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't turn the radio off though. It just mutes it. It's not actually a power off. Um, but that was enough. You know, because as soon as you open the door, the whole screen comes on and it does that welcome, you know, put your name on there and everything and welcome, da da da. It's very cool, very nice. Mm. Now then, this is the last sample on this planet. I'll tell you what though, when I ceramic coated it a couple of years ago, you should have seen it when I was finished. Oh my god. Because it's black, it, the bodywork looked like a freaking mirror. I spent eight hours doing that coating. Uh, and not just the coating, the coating doesn't actually take too long. 
Um, you've got to you've got to make sure that when you put it on though that you time the exact moment to wipe it off. You can't leave it on too long. You don't you don't want to do it too early. But it changes into like a rainbow color. You know, like when oil and water mix and you get that rainbow effect. It changes like that, and then that's when you start wiping it off. I was using a Gion Gion uh, begins with M. Oh, somebody Google it. <laughs> it's a ceramic wax by Gion. It begins with M. I was using that. And, um, yeah. The car needed to be cleaned first, obviously. Totally clean. Totally dry. And then prepped. The paintwork had to be prepped with a, with a solution I have called prep. And what that does is you spray it on the body panels... And any waxes, polishes that have been put there by the manufacturer, any polish, any wax, anything that's on the car to protect the, the paint comes off. Everything. So the ceramic coating gets applied to the lacquer. There's nothing in between. And, and then once the ceramic has dried, give it a couple of days, don't wash the car for at least a couple of weeks. Once that ceramic is fully cured, then you can start putting on your polishes and stuff like that but uh i'll tell you what shiny holy crap man he took a photo of that car and it was like a freaking mirror it was beautiful uh yeah ceramic coating is it's the it's for real yeah what it does is it gives the car two to three years uh protection um on the it it doesn't protect it from things like stone chips because you need PPF for that, uh, uh, paint, uh, paint protective film for that. Um, is that what PPF is? Yeah, it's, it's protective film, uh, which is, some of that protective film is awesome. It's expensive, but yeah, ask me if that works. <laughs> Fucking hell, Jesus. I Yeah, I'll tell you a story about that in a minute, right? But, uh, yeah, it protects the, it seals in the, the paintwork and the bodywork. And what it does is, like, if he brings the car to me and says, wash my car, when I wash it, because it has the ceramic coating on it, it makes it really a lot easier to wash. Um, <clears throat> it's easier to clean, and it's hydrophobic a little bit as well. Um, you won't necessarily end up with, like, if you run your hand over it, it's not necessarily going to be baby smooth. Because that's not what it's about. It's some some ceramics are like that. They will give you a smooth coating. But this one I used, um, it wasn't about that. It was just giving it a really gloss shine and protecting the paintwork. But yeah, it's very very good. Um, it's not a thousand dollars though. I mean, I got a little bottle. It was about I don't know twenty five thirty milliliters, and it was about a hundred pounds. So it's it's not cheap, but you you only use a few drops for each panel, you know. Uh, <clears throat> I've already slept, Ramoyne. I slept from uh, around six p.m. to around midnight, and then I woke up again about one one thirty one forty a.m. Let me just look up this product I used, guy, because it's doing my head in now. Uh, Gion. Ceramic. There's a few ceramic coatings by Gion, but and they they react and they work in different ways. Uh, well, no, the one that I used, Mohs. Yeah, Gion Mohs. M O H S. That's the one I used. And then, I also got a bottle of Gion Cure, which you, which I use for, you know, like a top up. Really, it's not it's not ceramic as such, but it's a it's a nano coating that makes the car hydrophobic. So if you get a glass of water and pour it on the wing, it'll the water will just drip off. So the next time I come to wash that car, I'll only need one drying towel to clean the whole thing, uh, to dry the whole thing. You know. Uh, it depends how tired you are, Ramoin. If your brain is tired, feels tired, then obey the brain. If you think you can... Because lasting the day, I don't think so. By the time you get to the afternoon... 
and then you'll sleep in the afternoon and then you'll screw up your schedule trust me i know uh yeah what was I, what i was saying about the the ppf coating as well the ppf protection uh that it's like a transparent film you can put on the car it's not cheap but if you have a really nice expensive car um you can you can have the front or the entire car done um the front most times is enough you just do the bonnet and the wings the bumper and maybe the the back of the the mirrors and if there's any if you're driving behind a truck or something you get a, a stone flipped up and it hits the bodywork it will not it will not chip it and some of them are, some of the um products are self healing so you can actually put this stuff on it or or rub it with a not a cloth but i guess you can rub it and it'll it'll self heal the the ppf as well but the best one i've seen i don't know this must have been some expensive stuff um this guy had an a bmw m5 right he just bought it it was second hand but he just bought it really nice and he ppf'd all the front of the car and the guy came out the guy who did it came out it was on tv it's a top gear thing i think what's that channel that top gear have got is it top gear is it called top gear no what's that top gear youtube channel that isn't called top gear anyway yeah so drive tribe there you go drive tribe it's on there the guy he had an m5 and he had the front ppf'd the guy came out with one of those electric sanding discs you know that machine you hold it in your hand it's got a little disc on it and it you know for for grinding a grinder there you go a hand grinder and he said i want you to i want you to grind on your bonnet and he said i've just had it resprayed he said yeah but trust me <laughs> so he he said don't worry he said we'll we'll cover everything so he got the hand grinder and he on the bonnet and I thought oh Jesus this is gonna go really bad and when he when he stopped he applied quite a bit of pressure and when he stopped he there was a a brown mark on the bonnet and I thought oh that's that's it but the guy goes and gets a cloth rubs it and it all comes off the PPF literally protected the body completely didn't even damage the ppf it put a mark on it but then he rubbed it with a cloth got the mark off and it self heals i mean this was this was expensive stuff i'm sure but like i say any stone chips or anything like that hitting the car your body works going to be absolutely fine it's it's going to be absolutely fine and maybe ppfing the front is cheaper than a respray if you have an expensive car um yeah yeah give it an hour or so let my stream put you to sleep remind and then go <laughs> right i think we're done here we're gonna do the next jump i'm gonna show you where i am guys we are Oh, there you go. 60 jumps away from Dear Glandry. And I'm somewhere there. Just coming in, just entered the inner Orion Spur. Now, this system I was in was undiscovered. This one isn't. So if the next one is discovered, I'm going to head down again. Because I want to try and get some first discoveries. The two planets I've just been on right now they were discovered and mapped but they did not have footfall so I've got footfall on those and obviously I've got the the, the, the plant scanning done on it so that's cool yeah so we'll just carry on doing that um, oh we've got a straight out jump here F F class star okay. standard F not the dwarfs I think 
should, I'm leaned forward here, I should sit back in my chair. Just relax a bit more. There we go. Okay, nothing to, nothing to stay for here then, just two sons, no daughters. Scooping done while we're here. <coughs> scoop dog. <laughs> Rusty doing doing that scoop dog. Close belt proximity. Oh, I've never heard that one before. Close belt proximity. How many? 23. Oh, please let it be a virginal system. It is. So this belt, close belt proximity, it must be this one. Close to the sun, I would imagine, right? Let's have a look, see if it says anything on observatory core. Close belt proximity, distance from the belt. What? Oh, it's the sun. Okay, so the sun is 01. Right? Are we classing this as 01? No. That's 01. So, okay, so what it's telling me is that the this asteroid belt is 54,000 kilometers away from the planet. Maybe we'll visit this belt. You don't get to visit asteroid belts too often, but maybe we'll go there and see if we can see if we can see how big the planet is from there. That's an interesting one. <clears throat> so okay, let's get the uh, let's get this. I'm gonna have to go and get a gl uh, glass of water in a sec, guys. Need to hydrate. Okay, let's go back and do these then. somewhere else let's see if we can hunt down this gas giant <coughs> there we go there's all the babies right so the gas giants bodies wonder if there will be any bios in here two geos No features. Yeah, anxiety. I get that sometimes. It's 
It does suck. How long did you sleep for then? If you were up for two days, did you get a long sleep? And was it the anxiety that kept you up? Oh, it's all geos, guys. There's no bios. We're not having fun on the bio at the moment. Oh, hello. Up or down? Up. Three hours, yeah, that's not enough, is it? Don't worry, man. You watch my streams, I'll, they'll put you to sleep. Apparently I have that kind of voice. <laughs> what chocolate did I buy for Christmas? Oh, when's your Christmas, though? Do you In Australia, do you have Christmas at the same time as us, though? Because ours is in December. Obviously your summers and winters are different, aren't they? Oh, unless you mean, do you mean Easter? Yeah, I haven't got anything. I haven't been out. Yep, yeah, haven't been out for about a week. Haven't left the house. No fit state. <laughs> System scan complete. Fit being the operative word. Oh no, I uh, yeah, I call that um I've got a term for that Kremlock. It's I call it going past the sleep threshold. Uh, I mean, I'd just woken up after six hours. I was watching a couple of YouTube videos and I was starting to drop off to sleep again. But I, I could have, but I, I came and streamed instead. So I'm probably fighting a little bit of that. But yeah, you can get tired and then you'll be overtired and then you'll stop being tired again. And then you have to wait for round two. Yeah, sunny Christmas. Yeah, I'm used to those. I'm used to sunny Christmases from being in Gibraltar. But not in the UK. I think this year we only had one day of snow. And even then it was light. December the 3rd it snowed here. And it laid for a while and it was gone the next day. And that's it. Uh, so yeah, no bios here. But, but, but. Loads of landables, mainly geos, but we have an interesting feature here where this belt is close to the planet. So let's select the belt and let's go over to it. And then we, we'll pick on the planet and see if we can see see how close the planet is to the belt. Because uh, it won't work the other way around, I don't think. I don't think we'll be able to go to the planet and then see the belt from the planet. I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> No, I don't think so. Unless you've got a really good, powerful, shiny torch. Um, but from this way around, eh, 54,000 kilometers? Whatever that is in miles, 54, uh, 35, 35,000 miles? I don't know. Right, let's get engaged night vision. Okay. No actual asteroids then to speak of, which is strange. Right, what buttons am I using for the scanner? Hmm. Oh. Rotational correction disabled. Rotational correction enabled. 
Yeah. The the zoomy thing on my scanner. What button am I using for that? Or oh, buttons? No, that's throttle. That's manoeuvring. Uh, is it one of the brackets? Oh, oh! I've just sent a heat sink out. Yeah, well done, Rusty. Let's take a look. Oh, that is the heat sink. Okay. Opciones, control, eh, el general controls, maybe, maybe not, ship controls then, uh, right, what are we looking at, are it commander, not targeting, it's the radar, isn't it? Let's go miscellaneous. Oh, page up, page down. Eh. Oh, I have to keep pressing it. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing on the radar there. Yep, I'm holding the button down. Try again. No, it only goes up in stages. But if you hold it... Oh no, it doesn't go all the way down either. Okay. Yeah. Alright, well let's target the planet. This one. And let's see if we can see it. Normally you can get to see asteroids just like you would on a ring, but... Nothing here. Okay, yeah, it's fairly... It's fairly close, isn't it? 8.69 light seconds must be... 54,000, I guess. I know what you mean, Kremlock. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Oh, Toblerone's gorgeous, man. Toblerone Maltesers and how many bodies? <laughs> yeah, I know Toblerone. I, I I like there's different flavors. You can get white chocolate and all that kind of stuff. I just prefer the original. But yeah, Toblerone is very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, that's it then. There's the planet. It's quite close. You can just about if I just disable the interface here. You can just about see the light on the other side of the planet there as it's forming a little ring. Um, let's go outside and see if we can check it that way. Yeah, there we go. So we'll move the camera and give it a good old zoomy. So there you go, see? So we're not too far away. Nice, cool. Uh, right, systems online and Let's see if we can get out of here without hitting a rock. Yep. Okay, so disable night vision and we want to be back on the D-scan. Right, so unfortunately, that's all this system wrote. So now we're leaving. Oh, cops. Do you know what I do for anxiety, Kremlock? Because I have some weird rituals when I'm anxious. Depending what it is, of course. But things to kind of just take my mind off it. And it's, it's literally kid stuff, really. But in my cupboard, I have uh, a box of Lego. And I also have some plasticine, okay? So sometimes when I'm anxious, I'll either grab the plasticine or the Lego, depending whatever mood I'm in. And I'll just get the Lego. Sometimes I can do it with an FX model. 
just buy an FX model and I'm just building it or painting it and it just distracts me. It, it's therapeutic and it distracts me. Same with Lego, just think, right, I'm going to build this or just build something abstract and just get the bricks and just build and just focus on that and just, yeah, I don't know, a lighthouse or just a spaceship or whatever you want to do or plasticine, all different colours, you say, right, I'm going to make this. It doesn't matter how crap it looks, nothing, it's not the point. You might say, okay, I'm going to make a plate and then I'm going to get all the different colours of plasticine and make a plate of food or something like that and just do that and just, I find that helps me, you know, because I, I, I just end up getting so focused, right, how can I make the plate, how can I round the edges, how can I make it look, you know, that crease thing it has in the middle. How how can I, how do I do, uh, give me some green plasticine, I'll make the peas, give me some orange, I'll do some carrots. And It's amazing how it, it helps me, it does. It's weird, but you just have to find whatever, there'll be something for you that makes you feel less anxious, that'll bring you down. The other thing I have is an MP3 player, which has no music on it at all, it's 64 gigabytes and it's got, it's comedy. That's all that's on there. And I just put that on. I've heard it, some of it a hundred times, it doesn't matter. I just play it and it's, I have it in the background. Maybe I'm even doing my plasticine or my Lego or my model building. In the background is the MP3 playing, the comedy. And uh, it's amazing how much it helps, quite quickly as well. So you just you just got to find something, man. And just, I don't know, I don't know if it's just the fact that I'm keeping my hands busy, that my, my you know, the plasticine, it's just something really silly, something really abstract. Um, you can say, okay, I'm going to make a ball, I'm going to make a plate, I'm going to make a dog. Uh, doesn't matter if the dog looks crap, just give yourself that little challenge and it'll distract your mind. Try, try something, honestly, it's like uh, plasticine is not expensive. Just get some of that or whatever. Yeah. Um, you don't, Denzel, from scanning the ring. You can scan the rings. I don't know whether you, I don't think you get a bonus. Maybe. I'll find out when I get back. But you don't, I, whether you get extra credit for it. Oh, God, I, don't, I can't remember. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. I spent a lot of time buying FX models of cars, you know, Ferraris and F1 cars and stuff. And I would just always have one near my bed. I would have the box, the, the paints, the glue, and I would just slowly take my time. And every time I got... I, a bit of anxiety I would just pick it up and start building the model or like I said plasticine or I've got some Lego stuffed away in a cupboard there I've had that for years and uh, yeah try it and once you're done with it you'll, you'll be <laughs> like with me you'll be sleeping I was anyway did we do this uh, that's the only advice I have, really. Beyond that, I, I have nothing. This is a different system, isn't it? Yeah, see, this guy was the one... This guy was... This Kron... Commander Kron here was the guy who was in the other system. So, we'll check out these three planets, the atmospheric ones, and we will see if there are any bios. If not, I'm going to head down... Right, so we'll put it centre screen there, and it should be right there. So, let's honk it. Body of one. Carbon dioxide atmospheric landable. High value terraformable. Meets mapping criteria. Body A1. Landable and terraformable. 
Mandible with atmosphere. High value body. Oh, a kit that came with a diorama as well. That's really cool. Yeah, Revel I bought a lot of. I bought some Tamiya uh, and Epix as well, yeah. And in, a, in the next town to me, well, I say the next town, like, I don't know, 20, 25 minutes down the road, there is a model shop, and it's huge, like freaking huge. But those things aren't really cheap. Um, and I also have two models of the, the space shuttle in my cupboard, which... 172 scale so yeah they're big <clears throat> but um, I haven't got around to doing them yet but I do have all the paints for them I've got all the brushes the putty as well you know <clears throat> so when you put the two bits two halves together and there's little it doesn't seal quite right you can just put the, the putty in sand it down and then paint I've got all of that stuff cool and it keeps the mind occupied and like i say if if you have carbon dioxide if you have a little bit of anxiety or or if you're feeling a little bit low you're not feeling 100 percent again i don't know let's say you're just not feeling quite right maybe a little bit of nausea or whatever you're just not feeling it again that kind of thing takes your mind off it distracts you yeah but might not work for everyone. Mileage may vary on it. I don't know. But I found a lot of comfort in some of those things. And for me, it, I don't care if it's Lego. I don't care if it's plasticine. I don't care if it's a kid's squeaky toy. I don't care. If it works, it works. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how silly it would be. I don't know, blowing <laughs> blowing through a straw into a sink full of water. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever it is. If, 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 you know, if for me, if it was a cure for my anxiety, I'm taking it. I don't care what it is. Yeah. And that's plasticine, Lego, Airfix models. Well, not necessarily Airfix, but, you know, models. Building models. It works for me. Mainly because it's a it's a distraction. Body B6. Keeps the mind distracted. Atmospheric landable with life. Body B6. May host a marked biological. Body B6. Meets mapping criteria. Yeah, you're gonna have to be something Body good B6. then because you're a long way away. Landable with atmosphere. Nah, bacterium ACs. One million. If you were the if you were the lucrative bacteria, I would make that journey. But you're not. So we're not. <clears throat> uh, uh, don't say that word, Kremlock. Don't say that word. It doesn't exist. <laughs> One of my pet hates. No, not pet hates. What would you call it? Peeves? Pet peeves? No, just something I pick up on. Legos. There's no such word as Legos. If you, if you have a thousand pieces of Lego, it's still Lego. Because it's a brand name, you know. It's there, there's there's no plural to it, if you know what I mean. But yeah, dig it out honestly. Space documentaries from YouTube. Yeah, there you go. Perfect, perfect. You get you get focused. You get interested in it. Honestly, it stuff works. And if you're into the space stuff, I don't know. Try and get some Lego and just. See, okay, I'll make a Sidewinder, I'll make a Cobra, I'll make a Diamondback. And again, it doesn't have to look exactly like it, but whatever. doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah. Drawing as well, that's great. Unfortunately, I'm not a very good drawer. But I, yeah, you can. Just get a, you know, some drawing paper and a pump-action pencil, because those are the best, aren't they? Um, you know what I used to buy when I was in my teens, guys? I used to love them. You know those pens with the super frickin' thin nibs? 
Rotring. There was another company called Stadler that also did them, but Rotring, and the nibs would be like 0.3 millimetres, 0.1 millimetres, super, super thin nibs. It was ink pens, but really thin. <clears throat> By, yeah, Rotring. You, get, you know the ones I mean? I'm assuming they still make them. Um, and those... I used to love drawing with those because the lines were really thin. You could get some amazing detail in such a small space, you know. I think we're done here, aren't we? Uh, yeah, we've got one bio and it's not good enough. Um, yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, I, I would think nothing about you know if i could just walking into a shop a toy shop and there's some lego there of a car or something and i just i just buy it for me i don't care yeah and i think right the next day i'm not feeling it i'm not feeling up to scratch i'm feeling a bit shitty i'm gonna i'm gonna build that car you know especially the technic ones i would love oh there's one out it's been out for years now Lego Lego Technic and it's a it's a Porsche. It's a white, orange, and black Porsche 911. Oh man, I'd love that thing. And they also did a Bugatti Veyron as well, but it's so expensive. Jesus, it's got so many bits though. But yeah, that the Porsche looks awesome. I wonder what because you know like when you can build something that you can also build. Um, they give you instructions where you can build other things from the same kit. I wonder what else that Porsche and that Veyron can do. But yeah, that Lego Porsche is around, what, 250, 300 pounds or something? Same for the Veyron. Yikers! <laughs> it's not cheap. Um, but yeah, like, I think it was years ago, I just went online and saw that somebody was selling a big box of assorted Lego. I just, uh, 50 quid or something, it was a big box of all sorts of sorted stuff. And I just bought it and I thought, right, that's gonna keep my brain occupied whenever I get anxiety. Thankfully, I don't get anxiety as much as I used to. I used to get it quite a bit, but then my environment changed and it was better for me. I think I changed whatever it was that was causing it, I changed it. And in my case, it was it was the job I was in. I went to a different job doing the same thing, but in a different company. Anxiety, bye-bye, bye-bye. Nice knowing you, it was gone. So you just, whatever's at the source of that. Yeah, I guess I was lucky. Uh, Anthony Struss, hi Anthony. Yeah. Things are on the mend. I'm, I'm recovering just from exerting myself and doing my head in, basically. Literally doing my head in. Uh, Nicholas. Hi, Nicholas. What helps me a lot when I'm a bit anxious is treating myself to some self-made food. Awesome. You see, because now there, you see, you've got the cooking as well, right? So you, you're doing the cooking. It's stuff that... It's the same thread, though. If you think about all this stuff, all it is, it's stuff that distracts you and makes you focus on doing something else in your case making some food and then enjoying enjoying it afterwards because there's obviously a satisfaction to that yeah even if it's something simple that you created yeah it's like lego you create it don't you but it's uh, or cleaning with some good music yeah exactly you're basically focusing your mind off whatever the anxiety is and focusing it onto something else that you're liking doing. Basically that. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, comfort food, yeah. Churchill Mark IV tank. Yeah, it's good. Modeling's great. It's, uh, it's good therapy. You know what would be a good therapy for me too? If I had anxiety, I think. I would think so. I can't confirm it because I'm not in that position. But I would think if I had anxiety, I think having a dog around would help. 
because dogs just they will take your mind off it and you can maybe just go for a walk with it or you just play around with it or you just lie down with it whatever <clears throat> a dog's always up for some fun <clears throat> yeah but in the absence of a doggy <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's just a case of finding out whatever suits you. Yeah, oh, there you go, Bokatan. Cats. Yeah, they do, don't they? I mean, I've had times where I've been in a bad mood. It's not, it's not necessarily anxiety at all, but just in a bad mood because maybe somebody's put me in one. Um, you know, if I'm down at my sister's place, for example, I might something's pissed me off and I've got Rusty and Merlin and those guys and New atmospheric it landing. really freaking helps body B5 <clears throat> meets mapping criteria body B5 landable with atmosphere because the dogs are just they don't know what's going on and they're just they're just there and happy happy with you at the, the whole time <laughs> a dog can just look at you and it's it can bring you out of a bad mood and you go oh you know what i mean dog can just bring you out of a, out of a mood immediately just with a look <laughs> and i guess a, a cat doing something daft like clawing at something or playing with something that makes me laugh they just make you smile We've been discussing some stuff on this stream, haven't we? A bit different to the usual. But it's all good. That's what we're here for, for chatting. <laughs> what about making a big Lego plate, then cooking your own food, put it on that, and then I was going to say, have some plasticine pudding. <laughs> I wouldn't advise to eat it, though. But, yeah. All while listening to music or whatever. Yeah, dogs... <clears throat> dogs are great therapy, man. We've also... You've also got to get at the root cause of the anxiety you know and know what's causing it and System maybe try and do something about that or eliminate that or whatever mine was my job i was 20 i don't know nearly 22 years in this job and the last five years was just stressful anxiety stressful really bad I used to get it all the time I had so many days off work, uh, but I had such an understanding management, the bosses, that it, it, I was fine. You know, my job was never at risk or anything. Um, but as, as soon as I moved jobs to a smaller firm and set my own hours, my anxiety just like disappeared, like literally just gone. I was able to set my own hours and say, look, I want to work from this time to this time on these days. And the company said, fine. And I made hours that suited me. That gave me some hours where I could, you know, during the day. So I would spend half the day in the office. The whole day I was on call in case anything happened, but I would spend half of it in the office and the other half was my time. And my anxiety just went i don't think i had i was at that company for about f i don't know five years six years before i moved i did not have a single day of anxiety in that company never not once so yeah <clears throat> amazing just that change made such a difference there you go, Kremlock. <laughs> you can build one with Lego. Yeah, or go and get one of those uh, plush ones, like a, a toy one, like a fluffy, fluffy toy one. 
um, and just talk to it. Or <laughs> maybe not that, but you know what I mean. Oh, you just got laid off? Ah, you see? There you go. And now you're anxious about... Okay. I think just... You, just You only need to worry about stuff you can control. The stuff you can't control... Get it out your mind. There's nothing. Forget it. But, um... Yeah, I, I get that. Because that can come with, you know, a lot of burdens if you have... <clears throat> financial obligations that you need to s settle, right? Yeah. No, I get that. I get that. So, the anxiety. So, if you get employed again, doing what you were doing or something similar, then that will make the anxiety go away, right? Forty seventy super, eh? Oof. <clears throat> right, we're jumping, guys. We better jump. Definitely Bokatan. Money, yeah. I would rather take a low-paying job that I'm a lower-paying job that I'm happy in, than a high-paying job that I'm not. Give me the happiness every day over the over the money. As long as I've got, got enough money to, to, you know, to pay those bills. Yeah. The happiness counts more, for sure. For sure. It's not worth... Being in a stressful job is it's just... Awful. Especially if you've got no options. <clears throat> But I would, if I was in a stressful job, I'm certainly looking for a way out to a better one. Because it's just not worth the toll it takes. Um, yeah, so hopefully something comes up soon for your Kremlock. Um, I don't know, did you, did you have a, do you have a trade? Do you have a profession? I don't know what your job was or whether you can... But something's gonna come up, man. Something will happen. And where are you in the world, anyway, mate? What what country are you in? <laughs> really, Majok? Wow. I think car mechanic probably has its pluses and minuses right it, it can be enjoyable because it's uh <clears throat> especially if you're working on your own car though like if you do your own car and you fix something yourself it's very satisfying i suppose it's a maybe a bit less so if you're fixing somebody else's car because you can't get the benefit from it but but the benefit from that is a happy customer a customer comes along and you say your car's fixed come and pick it up and they're like, oh, they're so grateful and so thankful that you've fixed this problem that has been plaguing them for ages. And you think, you know what? I made somebody's day today. And that's cool. It's, uh, it's good, that kind of stuff. And if you're into animals, I think, like, working in a dog shelter or an animal shelter or something would be very satisfying and and again just be it would have its stresses but i think it would be more therapeutic than anything i guess i don't know <clears throat> but yeah mechanic bin man either way you're helping people out you, you're doing a service for people aren't you so yeah it's cool 10 a.m argon rich atmospheric landable Body 10 a.m. Meets mapping criteria. Body 10 a.m. Landable with atmosphere. Yeah, but nothing on it, though. It doesn't look like there's anything behind the sun here, so... We've got another couple of blibs to find. There we go. One blib. And two blibs. System scan complete. Do you know what I didn't check? Just pop in here right now. Ah, it has been discovered. 
Okay, so I guess what we're going to do is go in here and we're going to slightly change our route. We're going to go down. System Let's... discovery complete. First body to map is 10 a.m. Are you saying 10 a.m.? Okay, so we go this 216 light years down. 24 jumps. We just pop further down into the on the galactic plane, as it were. That's what I did, Kremlock. I started off, I was a labourer, but I was always into computers, and eventually I got into a computer job. You know, just working the keyboard, basically, as a computer operator, inputting data. But then they saw that I had an aptitude for the technical side, and so I became assistant to the IT manager, and then I, I, I moved job to my first law firm, and I became an uh, IT manager there. And I just spent... 20 years as an IT manager. <clears throat> okay, that's all we've got. So, if we scan this and it comes to more than one body, there we go. It's fresh. Anything in the proximity? No, nothing. Okay. Let's have a look on here then. So this is a fresh system, guys. Let's see if there's any bios on it. I still haven't been to get my glass of water yet, have I? So, what are we now? Two hours in and my head's okay. It's not exactly where it used to be, but to be fair, I'm not exactly, <clears throat> I'm not exactly on a sleeping rhythm yet. Body 4. All premium boost materials in system. Premium boost. Well, I don't have a requirement for that. She needs to start saying jumponium. Because that's the term that was coined, isn't it? Because for me, a boost is when you press tab or, or something and your engines boost in normal space. <laughs> that's a boost. Oh, these newly discovered systems, man, we're not finding anything. These two revolving around each other, and this, and then these two revolve around this one, right? That's what this means. So these two go around this guy. And these two are revolving around each other at the same time, right? Four, five, and six. Let's go into the all review. We've got four. You can't see five and six because they're in here. There you go. So six. Yeah, so these two are swinging around each other. And they're going around, this is the orb, oh no, they're not going around six. So six is, six is orbit is the blue one. Then you've got these two kind of circling each other, doing a little dance like this around. So they both orbits, four and five orbit six, and then four and five also. What do they call that? Ah. <laughs> uh. What's it called, guys, when you've got these two planets that are going around each other? Anyway, yeah, so it's that. Does it say what it is here? But yeah, that. They just... It's like having a... Those, those things, you've got a car, and you've got a guy on one side, a guy on the other, and every time this guy moves around this side, he goes around the other side. Tidally locked? No, no, there's something else. Binary. Uh, yeah, binary, isn't it? Something like that. Yeah, no, tidally locked is just, I think, is when the bright side is always the bright side and the dark side is always the dark side, right? 
Yeah, binary, I think it is. I think. Yeah. Is this? I don't know. Yeah, binary, because there's two of them, so... Something like that. Binary orbit. Is that it? Binary orbit? That would that would make sense to me, yeah. Uh, right, let's get back to the other map. I like this Orion map because it's it gives you more of an impression of how the solar system is functioning. And there's a plus here on the two as well, look. So if we go in there, there'll be something else in here. Yep. Oh, look at this. You've got another one. Three and two are orbiting around each other. They're always on the opposite sides. I wonder if one's orbiting quicker than the other one and there are, there will be times when three will catch up to two and then will go away again. <clears throat> this one, orbital period 254 days and this one, 254 days. No, wait a minute, you need to click on it. There. Yeah, it's the same orbital period. So they're never going to catch up with each other, are they? They're just going to... Oh, no, wait a minute, though. That's the orbital period from planet number two, isn't it? No, that is planet two. Sorry, I'm getting it mixed up with the other one. Yeah, so these two are never going to meet. <clears throat> right, so what I'm... <laughs> I know what I meant. So on this one... We know we've got four and five that are... Huh? Right, number four, orbital... Period three three eight. Five is three three eight. So these are rotating around each other. At the, in, the, is this the orbital period around? They're not orbiting around six, though, are they? Six is orbiting around those two. If anything, it's a pity you didn't have like media player controls here, where you could just hit play, and it would show you like a full day's cycle of how, like an animation basically, of how this system, you know, where you see all the planets rotating in speeded up time, that would be really cool. You could just press play and stop and reverse or something and then just increase time, yeah, accelerate time and you could watch everything rotate as it does. That would be freaking awesome to have on this, on this uh, thing. That would be really cool. <coughs> but yeah, you see here, you've got the these two linked, <coughs> two and the three, and then you've got these two orbiting themselves, four and five, or, yeah, swinging around each other, and then you've got, and then they both go around six, or six going around these two. Six is going around these two, and these two going around each other. Eh, whatever. <laughs> A locked orbit. Yeah. It's something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Right, I'm going to get some water, guys. Give me two secs, and then we'll make the next jump. Right. You guys want to hear a joke? <laughs> you need to enable the scanner first. What? What do you mean, this one? How do you mean, Simon? Right, let me tell you this joke. Two village idiots, right? Let's call them, I don't know, Jimmy and Johnny. And... Their, their friend dies, okay? And Jimmy and Johnny both know that their friend's last wish was to be buried out at sea. So they grab him in the coffin and they put the coin into this, the coffin into this boat and they start rowing out to sea. And they get a little ways out and Johnny says, uh, I wonder if it's deep enough yet. 
and Jimmy jumps in the water and he jumps in and it's up to his waist and he says no it's not deep enough we need to go further out so he gets back in and they row out a little bit further he says maybe it's deep enough now he jumps out Jimmy jumps out the boat again it's up to his neck and he says it's not deep enough yet so he gets back in again and Johnny starts rowing the boat a bit further out he said oh it must be deep enough now Jimmy jumps out completely disappears in the water and uh, he comes up and he says yep it's deep enough now Johnny pass me the shovel Uh, sorry. Anyway, uh, oh, Simon, I thought you were talking about the uh, the when I was mentioning about the uh, orbit animation or something. Anyway, yeah, that's that's the stupid joke, and it's clean, so be thankful of that. Uh. Oh, do you want me to tell you another one? <coughs> it's a little bit dirty, but you guys can handle it, I'm sure. <laughs> so there's a guy on a farm, and his little boy shouts, Daddy! The bull, it's shagging, the bull shagging the, the, the cow. The bull shagging a cow. And the father says, Hey, I've told you not to say that. You use the word surprise. The bull is surprising the cow, okay? <clears throat> so about 15 minutes later, the little kid shouts up to his father, Daddy, the bull is surprising all of the cows. And he says, don't be silly. How can he su be surprising all of them? He said, well, he's shagging the horse. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think we better jump now. Yeah, that would be a good idea. <sighs> oh. No more clean ones. Tell you another one, a bit dirty. <coughs> These two guys driving in, a, driving in a van down a country road. And they see a... They see a sheep. It's got its head, head stuck in the, the gate. Can't get out. And one of the guys in the van says, Here, I've never shagged a sheep before. What do you think? Oh, he says, really? He says, yeah, I'm going to go over and I'm going to shag the sheep. So he goes over, does his thing. He goes back to his mate and he says, oh, he says, do you want to have a try? He says, don't be ridiculous. I'll never get my head inside that gate. <sighs> right. <laughs> we, better, we better leave. What do you call a grumpy German? I don't know. System scan complete. Getting, we're not getting any good systems here. That's the jump's done though, isn't it? Oh no, one more jump. Go on, Kremlock, you're keeping us waiting. What's the answer?
would you go? Oh dear. Let's not get too, uh, you know, let's not try and upset anybody though. <laughs> would you call a guy who lives, oh, would you call a guy who likes to hide in bushes? Russell. Right. Uh, yeah, might be a good idea right now, Simon, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're German? Okay. What do you call a man with a seagull on his head? Cliff. Oh. See, I, I can... I can do this all day. Because they branch out. Yeah. Turning over a new leaf, all that stuff. Well, at least we found some planets, but are we going to find any biological plantages? Come on. Yeah, nice to be back at the PC. My political correct box. Oh, no bios, man. It's nice to have the discoveries and everything, but... You know. Now, we don't have a, a next pl place mapped, do we? So, let's take a look. Okay. Are there any... Non sequences around. Let's have a look for those as well. Ooh, sneezy. Oh, why, Rusty? You should always set the scale first. There we go. Right. No, that's not right. Right, go here. Do M type. There you go. Now set the scale so you can still see them. That'll do. I'm happy with that scale. Now, take it off and do not zoom in or out. Just look around. Just looking for anything that's Non-sequence, neutron, black hole, possibly wolf ray or a carbon star would be cool. I think we're probably off the galactic plane there, we're a bit too low. Okay, nothing around that I can see. So... Uh, in that case, we need to get back in here. So we're a bit lower down on the plane now, so now we can plot the route. Hey, guys! You guys may know who I'm talking about here, but uh, if, if, you're, if you're a 
avid watcher of Star Trek The Next Generation, and you also have seen the... Okay, I'm going to give you... I'm going to ask you the question, but don't Google it. If you don't know, I'll tell you anyway. What's the link between the movie Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood, that movie, and... Now then. Hold on, I need to look this up. Cause I'm not, I want to make sure I got my facts right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the link between Dirty Harry and Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Uh, 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 uh. No Googling. <laughs> I only found this out the other day. I didn't even know. I didn't even realize. Oh, how many jumps? 60 still. Cool. Let's go. Uh, anyway, yes. Swipes. He swipes his phone to open it. So, uh, here's the link. Anyway, in the original movie, Dirty Harry, they had a guy called the Scorpio Killer. It was modelled off the Zodiac, actual Zodiac Killer. And the guy played a psycho, and he, uh, he beat a psycho serial killer. And he didn't get many acting roles after that because he was kind of typecast just because of that one movie, which is kind of really weird. And so he didn't get offered... He did do movies and stuff, but he didn't get... He didn't uh, do as much. And the guys, the actor who played Scorpio, um, what, before Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry, gunned him down, was... Uh, his name's Andrew Robinson. That guy played Garak. The Cardassian Garak in Deep Space Nine. What? Where, why am I only finding out about that like a few days ago? Anyway. You know, remember Garak? He was kind of... <laughs> kind of on both sides. Well, he was a Cardassian, but he would help the other side sometimes. Um... Same dude. You've seen Dirty Harry, right? It's the same guy, Andrew Robinson. The Scorpio killer. I remember. I remember his one of his last words or something. He would he would shout like, "I'm gonna." He would have a gun in his hand. He was a psycho, and he just he said, "I'm gonna kill all your mothers. I'm gonna kill them." And he would like that. And then Clint would eventually, was Dirty Harry, obviously got rid of him. Um, but yeah, and then they said, oh yeah, he went on to play Garak in Deep Space Nine. What? Excuse me? Same guy? Jeez. I didn't even, I didn't even put that link together. Yeah, Gar he was a tailor, that's right. He, play he was a good role, he played that well. I had no idea that was Scorpio. Because Dirty Harry was from like, what, 1971 or something like that? And DS9 was like about 20, 20 plus years later on. But, yeah, but I've seen Andrew Robinson when he was playing Garrick. I saw him without the makeup as well. You know, you see photos and stuff. I'd never even, I never put the two together. I never thought, oh yeah, that guy's the Scorpio killer in, in Dirty Harry. What a connection. Amazing. Yeah, he got typecast after that, though. He did get acting roles, but his role as Garak was brilliant. But I, I find that, like, there's the casting in the Star Trek series has, has, by and large, always been really, really good. You know, the cast of TNG, 
the cast of Deep Space Nine as well was really good. Uh, like the the chemistry between Odo and Quark was just brilliant. Um, yeah. <laughs> Then you had some of the crossovers, didn't you? Like some of the TNGs went to Deep Space Nine, like Chief O'Brien, Worf. Uh, yeah. Weird. Hello, Philip. Good morning. Oh, no. Sorry. I, I, I misphrased it. Uh, the gardening's fine. It's Things haven't been so good for me the, the the early morning gardening is basically a reference to bio bio scanning on these uh in these systems but yeah i've had a bit of a rough week so hopefully on the mend yeah odo and quark are brilliant you know what one of my favorite episodes was do you remember the episode where they got Odo got stuck in an elevator with Loaxana Troy and he had to, he had to return to his liquid state because it was it was killing him to keep that shape and she ended up using her dress to put Odo in and so he could go in there remember that that was a really nice touch, touching episode it was we had some good ones TNG had some amazing episodes Yeah, this is... Sorry, I just need to confirm this. Yeah, the, the Inner Light was an amazing TNG episode. As was um, Measure of a Man. And uh, Patrick Stewart's acting abilities showing off in uh, Chain of Command. Where he was captured by the Cardassians. That was just... Masterful from Mr. Stewart there. Yeah, I've had some good stuff. <clears throat> oh, and the the uh, Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra. What an episode that was. Pretty that guy passed away. The guy who played um, what was his name? Temba. His arms wide. What was the character's name? The episode was called Darmok, but that wasn't that wasn't the, the the character name for that guy. Anyway, yeah, so he passed away. What a brilliant episode that was! They wrote, they they did a they had their a whole language based on the, the myth of their own species, all the, all the myths in their own species. Freaking genius! They made it work as well. And the thing I, I'm most impressed with Star Trek is that Klingon is an actual official language. They they wrote enough about it. They wrote enough Klingon. So it wasn't just words like patak and, you know, and... Uh, can't remember what's the other word now. Anyway, yeah. But they turned it into a freaking language. It's a language you can learn like a language it has a there's a, you can actually get cling on to english translators honestly they literally wrote a language <laughs> amazing yeah the dominion yeah it dragged on a bit that whole dominion thing but it was okay i liked all the the only one I haven't seen right through is Discovery. I've only seen a few episodes of that one. But um, I will. I'll catch up on it. Because I think it's in its last series now, isn't it? First body to map is three. I think it's in its last series, so I'll, I will go through those. It doesn't matter if people tell me, ah, it's a lot of rubbish, whatever. I'm still going to watch it. Because I've seen all the other treks. No, it's not a joke, Kremlock. No, Klingon is a language. You can actually learn it. Yep. 
Yes, indeedy. Tolkien did the same thing, yeah. It's, it just shows the, the level of complexity. And even then, they had the Klingon speak in English most of the time. Or what was that stuff that they... Oh, gach, that thing they used to eat. Gach, it was like live worms or something, wasn't it? Came with a Klingon dictionary. Really? <laughs> Yeah, you can go on the internet and you will find a Klingon to English translator. You, you can just type something in English, it'll give you the Klingon equivalent. You ignorant... I love it when they mixed it as well. Like the, one of the Klingons would say to Worf, You ignorant Topar. <laughs> we go, right, let's go to the dictionary and look up Topar. <laughs> No idea what Ketracel White is, do I want to know? Right, let's do a honk in here, because there's definitely stuff to be found. Go. 18, so there's already like, what, four items already on the map? Three. I'm saying four, and the number's right in front of my face there. Whoa, look at that. Of fanning out. Body BC3. Argon atmospheric landable with. Uh, crap biologicals BC3. though. May host a marked biological. The usual. Body BC3. Meets mapping criteria. Body the usual BC3. being. Landable with. Bacterium vesicular bes and fontaculiva campestris. That's what I mean Body by BC1. the usual. And that will be the same again. Criteria. Body BC1. Landable with atmosphere. BC2 will be the same. It's the way it works. Body BC2. Argon atmospheric landable yep, with life. It is. Body BC2. May host a marked biological. It may do. Body BC2. Meets mapping criteria. Body BC2. Landable with atmosphere. Considering that every time she says may host a marked biological, that it actually does, surely it would be more logical to change that speech to hosts a marked biological. Three geos on that one. Oh, we're still not done here. More blibs. Okay. Body of four. Argon atmospheric landable with life. Oh, vesicular and campestris. May host a marked biological. Body of four. Meets mapping criteria. But here, Body there's... A4. Okay, hold on. Landable with atmosphere. Body A6. All premium boost materials in system. All surface materials in system. Yeah, all 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 raw materials. All, yeah, all raw materials in the system. There's another one. See, now this is starting to add up. But it also adds up on time. That's the only other problem. So, mm, let's take a look. We have body of five, argon atmospheric landable. They're all life. the same. Body of five, may host a marked biological bacterium vesicular red. Meets mapping criteria on three of the body four. Of one is gold. Landable with atmosphere. And every other one. System discovery complete. First body to map is a four. Not a four, a four. Right, so we've got four planets with with plantage. 
all of them, now it isn't all of them, but bear with me, all of them have bacterium basicular red and fonticulia campestris amethyst, except for one that's slightly different, that's bacterium basicular gold. The other three are, the other three are red. However, they're only, all of that lot only pays a million each. But because it's first footfall, each one will be five million each. So that's ten million per planet, including the bonuses. So that means if I scan the bacterium and the fronticulia on all of them, that's forty million with the bonuses. So now it becomes a little bit more worth it. Bacterium basicula and fronticulia campestris. So now the question is, do we do them? So it's it's basically BC1, uh, nothing. It's two and three. It's these two first. And then the other one is A4, A5, which is down here. Why are the A's down here and the B's up here? Isn't it supposed to go down? A, B, and C. Oh, okay, because we're looking at the... So again, with the stars look, you've got these two going around each other. And then this one goes around those two, right? We'll take a look at that on the orrery map. But okay, I'll tell you what, let's do at least one of them. Now she said the first one to map is A4. It's not this one. That's telling me that A4 is the closest one. So we'll pop that in. And we'll check it on the nav panel to be sure. And she's right. A4 is the, is the nearest one. The rest are a little bit further. <clears throat> Let's take a look on the orrery map then. And have a look at what's happening with these stars. Because we got these two together. These two together. Looks like a music note. Uh, what do you call it? Oh, come on, Rusty. You can read music. Right, you've got a crotchet, a quaver, a semi brief, a brief. What's the ones with the two lines called? It's a, no, it's a quaver, isn't it? Yeah, it's a quaver. And then you've got, you have another line, it's a semi quaver. And then another one, it's a semi demi quaver or something, demi semi quaver. <clears throat> Then you've got the crotchet. So what's the crotchet with the little tail? Is that a semi-crotchet? You know, I haven't done music for so freaking long. But I can read it. I can read music. Like, if you show me written music, I can tell you where the notes are. You know, the sharp, flat, <clears throat> all that stuff. So the, the, crotch, the crotchet with a squiggly line is a... I was mistaken that for a quaver, but it's not. <clears throat> so I think it's a semi crotchet or something. Yeah. <laughs> something like that. This is a semi demi semi quaver. Semi demi semi. Is it semi demi semi or demi semi demi? Semi demi semi quaver with the three lines. And you can even get four lines, right? You're basically, at that point, you're basically playing both notes together. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, okay, let's have a look in orrery. <clears throat> ah, so there's one of the stars. There's the other one. But there's three of them. So, what's going on? We've got B and we've got A, right, but... B and A, but on B, you've got B and C together. Okie dokie. So on here then, in here, we go down there. That's why it's called BC4 then, BC, because B and C are having a little journey around each other. That's why these are neither B nor C, they're both BC. It to make sense. Ah, that's a thing. I've only just got that now. So, 
the naming convention here is like obviously A because it's A3, A4 because it's, it's orbiting around A. There's nothing for C. But these two are together orbiting each other and that's why this takes the star name of both of them, the B and the C. But not this guy. Not this guy. What's going on with him? What's going on with B1? He's on his own. There he is. He's a loner. That's cool. So he's he's not concerned with C at all. So he doesn't get the label BC. Not label. What's the word I'm looking for? Designation? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, he doesn't get the, the BC designation. He just gets B. I'm just working all this out now. It's only taken me nearly nine years, guys. Don't worry. Slowly but surely. <laughs> Slowly but surely. Frickin' hell. Okay, she's told me to go to A4, we're going to A4. It is designation, isn't it? Yeah. When your brain knows there's a word and you can't come up with it. Uh, no, Kremlock, no. The, you, the, uh, the FSS is totally reliable. If it doesn't report any bios, be sure there will not be. I didn't want to fall into the trap there of saying, the, of saying FSS scanner. Because the last S on FSS is scanner. So I would be saying... Uh, what is it called again? Spectral... Filtered spectral analysis. So that, yeah, I would be saying filtered spectral scanner scanner. <laughs> Yeah. It's like um, in Gibraltar, they have a place called the ICC. And it's like the ground floor is shops, right? For, so you just go shopping. But the three, three or so floors above that is all car park. Okay, so it's kind of that deal. Car park that you can park there to go to work, whatever, and shops on the, on the ground floor. And it's called the ICC, which stands for the International Commercial Centre. Gibraltar likes to use the word international a lot, even though it's completely local. Uh, but yeah, International Commercial Centre. And a lot of people call it the ICC Centre, which is not correct. Y you have to either go with IC Centre or ICC, because you're basically saying International Commercial Centre Centre. <laughs> it's like saying the BBC Corporation. That doesn't work either. But anyway. The nuances of life, eh guys? Gotta love it. If anybody has any other examples. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, pin number. Yes, that's a good one. What is it? Personal personal information number or something? Or private information number? Something like that? Surface Identification number? Map. Yeah, the N is for number. Yeah. Map is a file. That's another good one. Pin number. Yeah, that gets used all the time. <clears throat> and it should be like PI number, shouldn't it? Or private... What's it stand for? <laughs> Yeah, a very good example. Right, there we go. Bacterium and Ponticulio. The good thing is the mapping is the same. So let's go land and do the first one. I normally don't bother with Vesicula and Campestris, but okay. So the Campestris that we're looking for, I think, is those holy lollipops, right? Isn't it? Let's have a look. I might be thinking of something else, but we'll see. Fonticulura Campestris. Ah, it's not the Holy Lollipop. So what are the Holy Lollipops then? It's not Fonticulu at all. Hmm. 
Only lollipops. Osseous. It's osseous. Those. Osseous pumice. <laughs> yeah, that's when it doesn't work, Simon, though. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? <laughs> Pin number's brilliant. I like that one. See, I, I, that's one I never thought about, but it's, you're right. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Oh, this pixelization it never used to be this bad it used to update quite flu fluidly on the way in now it's it's staying pixely for a while right so let's see we'll see if we can get both the bacteria is normally the pain especially if it blends into the terrain you know the colors it's it can be quite a pain to, to get them but The Campestris, now I've seen it, reminded myself on the Codex what it looks like. They're not difficult to find. And even if we just did the Fontaquilia here, we'd, that's still 20 million. If, if there'd been another couple of planets like this, we've paid for a Python already. So think of it that way. Is that my shadow? Me and my shadow. Alright, always on the way after glide, I'm always checking the uh, gravity so I can time my dethrottle so I don't smash into the flicking floor. See, we've got Fontaculia there. That's Fontaculia is not difficult to find. This particular one, anyway. There's a batch over there. Now, the range of everything we're going to be looking at is 500 meters, regardless of the bacteria or this. So, it's going to be a car job. You can see in the distance there's some more, uh, and it's around 280 on the heading. So, if we take the, uh, the SRV out, We'll get this scan that we've got. I think there's some to the side of me, so we'll do that one because it's closer. Uh, and yeah, it's further away from the one in the distance. Oh, bloody Nora. There we go. Alright. Oh, sit back. Well done. Hopefully I... <laughs> Jesus! I can get out, can't I? Yeah, there we go. Right, didn't I land near some? There we go. And that's behind? No, that's in front. Okay. There's the one to the side of me. So what I want to do is get the one that's the furthest back. And there's some over to the right there. Fonticulua campus is scanned. 50 grand. Base value 1 million. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. New amethyst. It's going to be that on all of them, so... Fonticulua campus is amethyst. And first footfall, which is cool. That gives us our bonus. <laughs> Friggin' boot in the air. <laughs> Alright, now we'll chase the ones in front of the ship. Obviously not those, they're too close. But the one that was at 280. Sample collected.
Right, so I did I did half of my uh, thing that I needed to do, which was bringing the water in here. Now I've got to do the other half and drink some. You travelled over 500 meters from previous song. <sighs> there you go. Ping it. There we go. Lovely. Lovely and green. Now for the other one, I think to all the ships over Second there, isn't partial it? Partial sample collected. Oh, is that some? Three fifty. It is, but I don't know if it's in range. <clears throat> or out of range. It needs to be out of range really. So three fifty. Just like changing the heading on a plane. It's exactly the same thing. Yeah, you see, Campestris is easy. But I haven't seen any bacteria so far. So hopefully it's not hiding itself. So this is the one I was targeting right here. And if it's not far enough, there's some more further out. That's big. Oh, look at that forest over there. There's plenty here. Normally I have something on screen that tells me the distance that I've travelled. Why is that not on the screen? Um, that's EDMC, isn't it? And I am logged in. EDR not authenticated. <coughs> that shouldn't matter. It it does or well, it does still work. Oh, EDR is ED Recon. It's a plug-in for uh, ED Market Connector. It says it's not authenticated. Last time I, I tried to do that and go to their page, there was nothing there. You traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Oh, you know what it might be? I know Elite Dangerous tells you, but it doesn't tell you the distance between the other samples. Is it telling me when I'm on foot? No. Well, no dialogue on the screen to tell me that. It used to tell me as, as, I, as I went somewhere, it used to count up the meters on the screen and tell me. How weird. I wonder what's happened with that then. Right, so Fontaculio is done. have to wait for the animation to complete before you jump in. Now bacteria, well, okay, I haven't seen any and the best way to go and find some is in the ship, not the SRV. Sample collection complete. And this is bacterium vesicular because you get vesicular of, of looking for it. Yeah, I've noticed as well when I run uh I keep forgetting the name of the damn thing. 
Elite Observatory. When I'm running Elite Observatory, <coughs> my antivirus comes up with a, a thing. It still runs Elite Observatory Core. It still runs it, but it does also... Hold on. It, it does also come up with a, a thing about it trying to access a website or something, and it can't do it. And it thinks that the website is a little bit dodgy. Let's have a look on here. Pop-up notifications. Display bottom right. Okay, so we've got that on the screen. Yeah, those are fine. But I think the other ones that tell me the meterage... <coughs> yeah, I think that's... from somewhere else. Um, botanist, let's have a look at that one. Enable the overlay. Bio insights. I wonder if that... I wonder if that antivirus message is uh, a thing. I don't think it's an actual problem. And as for ED Recon, well... Let's see if we can get it authenticated. So, file. Let me see if I can show you this on screen. I don't think there's any issues with that. Uh, so. If I show you Elite Market Connector on the screen, I don't know if it's going to carry on showing the details. So this is just this has just come up because see we have this issue here not authenticated so if we go to settings see it's a different window again um, <clears throat> I, yep I don't have any issues with the information on the screen so let me see if I can bring this up now Nope, that's my Elite Dangerous screenshots, which I use for the thumbnail. Uh, settings. No, it doesn't show it on the screen. What about... Okay. I'm going to try and see if it will do it using different capture method. Let's have a look at that one. No. Okay. It doesn't, so I can't show it. Right, let me have a look. ED Recon. I've got an email and password there. It doesn't like it. So I'm just going to click EDR website. EDR is a third party plugin for Discord. Blah, 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 blah. Fine. Home community bot plugin and support EDR. Install, apply for an account. Ah, you have to apply for an account, yes. And then you have to wait. How would you like to be contacted? Email, please. Now this is going to be weird because I'm sure I've done this before though. It says here by email but they're not asking me for my email address so how are they going to do that? Private message via Elite Dangerous forum Discord email is better. Specify your nickname. Oh, let me just fill this in, guys. It won't take a second. Which e ah, which email address? Rusty dog. That one. Okay. Which platform do you play on? That one. Do you have EDMC installed? Yes. How frequently do you play in open?
have a which is not strictly true but they don't have a they don't have a better option you spend most of your time in the bubble it's kind of a mix what is your time zone right now it's UTC how would you describe your primary role freelancer whatever anything else you want to say How did you find out about ED Recon? Uh, can't remember. I was going to put word of mouth. Apparently, I've missed out. Question. There we go. Your response has been recorded. There we go. So all I've got to do now is look out for an email. I don't know how quick that's going to be or if it's automated, but I'm pretty sure I've already got an account on there. But it's not letting me in with the password I'm using. And I don't know if changing my password, if it tries to log me in straight away. Like, what if I just got in right now? <laughs> But quick I'm gonna try one more email uh, one more password sorry no I've kind of got three main ones that I would use for that okay Right, never mind then. Let's press on. Uh, yeah, basically, they're asking, you know, what, what you do in the game. Bounty hunting, pirating, exploration, trading, all that stuff. I just put freelancer, which kind of puts me down as a bit of everything. Which is probably the most accurate answer anyway. I should just... <laughs> there should be an option for live streaming. That's what I do the most of in Elite Dangerous. How did I get into here? <clears throat> to squeeze in this way. Yeah, I'll just the material help is good. Not strictly a plug-in kind, although is it? I don't know. It's an it's a separate application that plug. It kind of plugs into your journal, doesn't it? I mean, ED Recon is a plug-in for ED Mark, Market Connector, but I would I wouldn't describe Market Connector as a plug-in or anything. It's just a third-party um, application. Right, let's jump for some backy, backy teria. But yeah, uh, material help is just freaking awesome, isn't it? Though, I mean, it's so, so useful. I couldn't be without it now. Makes me wonder how I managed before. Right, let's have a quick looky. What? See if we can know what we're looking for. I don't know why I'm carrying a stupid GoPro. Apparently the GoPros, those GoPro cameras, that everyone's whinging about them now. So, you know, the latest ones, I think I've heard on 10, maybe the 11 as well, GoPro 11, that they have reliability issues, heating issues. 
So everyone's going for the D. Uh, mm, DJI cameras, DJI instead of um, GoPro. Apparently, the DJI ones are pretty good. Um, they make drones as well, which I've seen DJI drones in action, and they are freaking awesome. Tiny little things, and they they're so stable. They've got these stability things in them. They're brilliant. Um, so yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if the DJI cameras were better than the GoPros. Uh, anyway, what we're we looking for? <laughs> Particular. There you go. Yeah, so it's that. It does kind of blend in with the landscape and it's just blotchy, really. Okay, that's what we're keeping an eye out for. This is not the right terrain to be on, though, surely. It is the right terrain. Don't call me Shirley. No, but I mean, b uh, bacteria is usually, it likes the flatlands, doesn't it? Use my comp scanner. Yeah, let, let it flash. And make sure it's not coming up on anything fonticulu-ish. <laughs> Fonticulu-ish. Oh, yeah, airplane, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what you were meaning there, and then I remembered what I'd said. We've got to take him to the hospital. A hospital? What is it? It's a large building with patients, but that's not important right now. What's the matter with her? I can't tell. You can tell me I'm a doctor. <laughs> Yeah, they did some good wordplay. There was also a movie with a submarine as well, right? Called Top Secret. Remember that one? There were some funny lines in that one as well. Just the same kind of idiotic humor. <gasps> That's what you get for looking at the chat. You nearly crashed. Right, there's some more flat lands here. We need to... If I remember coming in on the glide, uh, there wasn't much flatness. I don't want to spend... Oh, hello. I don't want to get too close to it because... Oh yeah, we can. We can do it on foot. I was going to say my SRV won't, won't deploy the thing, but you're all fine here. Bacterium vesicular scant. Base value 1 million. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. New Ooh. codex entry. Bacterium Ooh. vesicular. Red. <laughs> Shields nearly went. Oh, yeah. Well. Take the shortcut route. So this is it guys, this is what it looks like, cobblestones. Down periscope? I've not heard of that one. Sometimes you just want to turn your brain off when watching movies eh, and just watch something really silly. What was the movie where uh, Mike Tyson was in it and they had a tiger. What was that one? First partial sample collected. Is it something where they went to Vegas or something? I don't know. Anyway. What was that noise? Is that a message coming in? Yeah, I want to do this Titan travel thing as well, guys. Back on the Rusty account. Venture into the Tyrannus cloud. Hangover, that's the one. That's the one. Yep, 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 yep. I saw that once. 
Oh, I thought that was lightning. You see that, that light on the top of the cockpit glass? I thought there was a lightning bolt, and I just thought, wow, that would be awesome. Yeah, no, <laughs> it wasn't. How cool is that? Would have been like a lightning storm in the distance. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. You know what, that overlay, just thinking about the one, the overlay that tells you the meters distance, that might be when you have Captain's Log 2 running. Yeah, that might be Captain's Log doing that. Right, bacteria will only appear, I think, on flat, flat ground and maybe on partial flat, partial rise just on that crease there like that that's pretty much it I think I don't think you're gonna see one up on the mountainy areas so we're looking for flat bits really we might get a hit on the composition scanner but I'm using my eyes as the main point because the composition scanner only sees ahead, directly ahead. Okay, we've got a nice little flat patch here, so let's scan it. So many times though, they just look like rocks. got to have some pretty decent uh, peripheral vision. Oh, you like those movies, Kremlo? <laughs> you know, it's weird because if you, I, I, I'm, I very much like comedy stuff, but if you ask me to name my favorite comedy movie, I don't think I would have a freaking clue. Maybe you guys will come up with a comedy movie and then I'll go, yeah, that's that one. I like that one. Oh, yeah, I could name it. Yep, yeah, okay. It's an older one, but hilarious. And if you guys have seen it, maybe some of you guys will agree. It's, it's I mean, come on. Okay, so for me... If I had to, this one's definitely in my, my top, I don't know, on the top shelf. Uh, Stir Crazy with Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. Brilliant. Those two in that movie. Second partial song awesome. Collected. Loved it. What was the big guy called? Something burger. Burger. Oops. I can't remember. Yeah, stir crazy. Great movie. Absolutely brilliant. Loved it. And the yes, the the other ones. Any Gene Wilder, uh, Richard Pryor movie, like See No Evil, Hear No Evil, Silver Streak. They were just brilliant. Richard is called Moving. Richard is called Moving? Is that the actual title? That's not like translated or anything from German or nothing? Richard is called Moving. Interesting. Let's look here, see if we can get the third sample in this little patch. <clears throat> oh! Oh, the one with Richard is called Moving. I've got you. Yes, Moving. Minimum distance reached. I also remember uh, Brewster's Millions. Oh, Moving. Yeah, I've not seen that one for a long time. Yeah, Brewster's Millions was good too. Richard Pryor was really funny though. And what's that one where he's... Uh, it's just... Oh, it's called The Toy, isn't it? Where he becomes a toy for a rich kid. 
<laughs> and there's our third sample, yay. So I'm expecting the other planets to have a surface very similar in colour and everything. But okay, I don't know how long it took us to get those six scans. Yeah, no worry, Kremlock. I, now that you've said it, I, your sentence does make sense. Hello. Looks like a fountain, doesn't it? I expect water, like a water feature. Anyway, uh, right, over here. I should have parked in front of it because that way, when I come out the back, I'm already ready to go. Sample collection complete. <clears throat> I used to like John Candy as well. I'll tell you who I don't find funny though. I don't know why. I just don't find him funny at all. And I can't explain it. Um, Adam Sandler. I don't know. Just not funny to me at all. Weird, isn't it? Yeah. Right, that's this planet. Duh, 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 duh. So she should now say something and tell me which planet to go to next, right? Wait a minute, I'm just going to confirm that we are done. Because otherwise... Yeah, we are. 3-3. Three, three. We're good. Okay, up we go. So the next one is A5, I guess. Yep. I'm guessing that uh, Elite Observatory Corps is listing them in distance order. So A5 will be next. Yeah. Tropic Thunder. Is that the one with um, Tom Cruise and, and stuff? Tell you what, though, he was Adam Sandler was he's a lucky bugger when he did that movie click because he was his missus. I'm sure he he gets to decide who do you want your wife to be? Oh, Kate Beckinsale. Oh, yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, so Kate Beckinsale played his wife. Yeah, <clears throat> it's not because she's gorgeous, right? No, 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 it's not that. No, just she's a good actress, right? Right, okay. Yeah. Is that why you added the extra kissing scene? Uh, I just thought it was contextual with the script. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, you know they've had a part in choosing <laughs> who they want to... Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Hey Andy, good morning. We've been on for three and a bit hours already. Three hours twenty-three. It's been a a, a crazy week, Andy. Woof. Yeah, I, he's he's. I don't know why. He's, Sandler's just not somebody I find funny. There's a couple of Brit comedians as well, which I don't really find funny either but I've seen them now in a couple of TV series and they're all right okay <coughs> maybe it's just not my style of humor but yeah Me. Um, 
bang, 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 bang. Let me slow this down a moment. <coughs> <clears throat> Need to clear my throat here, man. Yeah, that's not the window. After... Or is it? Hold on, guys. I'm just battling something here in OBS. Yay, thank you. Hey Bon Doodle. Uh, just early streaming man, just had a really rough week. Did myself a mental mischief. <laughs> hey Tambrello. Right, this is the, well I know this is off topic guys, but I did mention it earlier. So this is the thing I bought, this Le Mans Ultimate, so I'm going to be streaming this on this channel. It's got all the Le Mans uh, season, the FIA World Endurance Championship and the 24 hours of Le Mans all in here. <clears throat> so yeah, so I grabbed it. There we go. But these cars, man, these hypercars, I can't even take a corner without spinning out. So that's going to be fun. Enjoy. The Benny Hill theme song. It's called Yakety Sax. <laughs> Yep, Yakety Sax it's called. Yeah, it's twenty four ninety nine. They did have it cheaper on CD keys, but only by like a, a pound. So I didn't bother. I just got it straight off Steam. Yeah, it's it's got some Yeah. See me play it first, Anthony, and then and then decide. Well, it's up to you. It does have a on the on the start screen though. It did have a very nice picture of a Porsche 9, 911. Not quite sure if it's a 992. I don't think so. It didn't look like it to me. But what do I know? I don't know jack about cars. So here we go. Let's go to surface and scan and things and stuff. So yeah, there's three there's three genres. You've got the GTE which has the Porsche and the Aston Martins and the Ferraris. You know, the, the like the GT3 cars that you can get in Assetto. And then you've got the LMP cars, Le Mans prototypes, and, you know, they look like they look. And then you've got the hyper cars. And you've got, like, all three classes on track. So if you're in if you're in a standard GTE car, you've, you've got to look at your mirrors the whole time because you've got, you've got uh, hyper cars and... LMP cars whizzing past you the whole time because obviously they're in a different class and then you've got all the battery and electric management to do on the car um jeez fun oh yeah right so the fontaculia bacteria map is the same so we don't have to worry about that we can find them both. So what we're looking for now, let me just go into combat mode. I'm looking for some flat area because they'll both grow there. So I think, isn't it the lighter blue areas are better? These these ones clearly bumpy. But this greeny one? Orbital flight engaged. Oh, I don't know if that's smoother. Can't tell from up here anyway, it's all way too high up. So we'll see what happens after glide. Or we'll just keep it on this mode. And just go for whatever looks flattest.
Oh, oh, Michael Fassbender had a go, yeah. And guess who he was married to? Kate Beckinsale. <laughs> yeah, greeny colour, yep. Which gets bluer the more you go down, by the looks of it. But yeah, this colour. There we go, that looks a bit more reasonable. And we'll plan our descent somewhere here, I think. Right, 0.22 is the gravy, uh, gravity. Not that I'm hungry. Right, Fontecilio are right there, so we're going to park in front of it this time. And as you can see, it's just on the bumpy bit behind me. And there's one to my left. Okay. I'll tell you what was a good movie though, was that uh, Ferrari versus Ford or something, whatever it was called. That was really good. There is one thing I haven't seen yet though, it's, it's not a documentary, it's a dramatisation called Enzo, about Enzo Ferrari. I can't believe I still haven't watched that yet, I've got to get round to it. <coughs> that guy was a <laughs> Enzo Ferrari, the actual Mr Ferrari himself. <coughs> he was a no-nonsense guy, let's just say that. Actually, we can, we can get the uh, SRV out for this, can't we? Right, so let's go in the opposite direction. We gotta clear the 500 first. But she might be a bit delayed in telling me. Jesus Christ. That's what the Le Mans game is like when you take a corner. I cannot keep the... It's okay in this... <clears throat> Excuse me, hold on. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled it's okay in the GTE class, it's not so bad. But in the hypercars, man. It's spinning like a top. Maybe it's simulating cold tires, who knows. Second partial sample collected. Okay, and for the next one I'm going to see if I can triangulate by whizzing off to the side. It's everywhere, isn't it, this stuff? So as soon as they tell you that you've d the distance has been reached, there's always one close by. A bunch. Nice 360 there. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over five. I'm gonna try this one, just see what happens. Yes. There's a couple though, isn't there, Andy? I prefer female voices overall though. <clears throat> 
It's a pity my natural voice, Amy, isn't working on with this. <coughs> Don't think so, Cramlock. Right, that's that done. If we see any backy on the way back, bacteria, we'll give it a quick scan. We'll hunt it from the air in the SRV. Oh, we got one. Don't lose your bearings. Now, is this the one? Is this the gold one? Hold on a minute. No. So we don't need to do a, a thingy scan. No, it's the next planet where the bacteria is gold, so we need to do a, a SRV scan. Come on. Oh, we haven't finished the other things yet. Did I not sample the third one? Now you're going to walk. Or was that the second one? I don't know what my mind's playing at. When I deprived it of oxygen, I really did not do it any favours. Oh, it's green. We're good. Yep, punishing myself by walking the rest of the way. Sample collection complete. Right. <coughs> Spider Man. I didn't want to drive back because I didn't want to lose the bacteria. It seems it's quicker to run, eh? Yeah, you can't do the forward jump like you can in uh, Starfield. Which we haven't played for a while. There's a few things we haven't played for a while. <coughs> the Euro trucks and the American trucks. The, the Last of Us. We still need to keep up on that one, don't we? And what's the other one? The space one with the two women who got together. What's that one? Bacterium vesicular scan. Yeah, that one. Base value one million. Minimum sample distance. The uh, the meters. expanse. First partial sample collected. Those are still hanging around. There's another bacteria right there. Jesus, I just got a new patron. Patreon. No, patron. Yes, patron. Oh, cool. I'm just switching my phone off because it's going to get on, on my nerves. Right, so we've already got the three Ponticulia and one sample of bacteria. 
So now we just need the ship for the other two, and we're good. <clears throat> yeah, I know, it's boring old bacteria fontaculio, but yeah. Every planet, 10 million, and this account with another, adding another 40 million, I've only got 90. So think of it in those terms, I'm going to, you know, I'll have 50% more in my account. Did I just I just pressed a button on my joystick and I don't know what it did. Oh, weapons. Didn't fire them, just brought them out. Right. So, there's another bacteria. All nice and flat here, so. Minimum distance reached. About a 30 degree tilt on the ship. And from previous sample. Hello, hello. Peripheral working? I don't know. I thought my peripheral vision spotted something here. Well, hey, talking of good things happening to YouTubers, <laughs> like me at the moment, which... Um, one of my... One of my? That's not the right way to start that sentence, Rusty. One of the people that I subscribe to, like, uh, uh, for sim racing at least, I think he's the only guy in sim racing I subscribe to, Jardier. Um, he's a very good, he's very good, very quick, very fast. Um, like, I, he's on a different friggin' level to me, like, night and day. Um, he just had some good news. Um, he is, from May, competing in the Renault Clio uh, Cup, for real, like for real, he's got his own actual car and he's competing in, I think it's the, it's the smaller championship, it's only five, four or five rounds instead of the full nine, and then looking forward to next year doing the whole nine. Um, but yeah, how frickin' cool is that? From sim racer to racing. He'll manage. He's good enough. <laughs> yeah, he put out a video the other day just to mention it. Absolutely amazing. So yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll get to fly a spaceship one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Hey, Rusty. You've been flight simming. Why don't you come and fly this Boeing for a while? Oh crap. It'd be oh, it'd be cool to go to one of those. You know those actual official flight simulators where you can actually fly an Airbus or a Boeing. Those proper ones on the hydraulics, and s see if I could manage it. I think so. Right. I mean, you can't load up a Simbri flight plan. <laughs> But they will have scenarios where you land in the plane and stuff. I, I think I could do it. I used to go... To, oh, awesome, Kremlock. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, those things. I I may fare better in a Boeing than an Airbus. I don't know. But Airbus is kind of just... It just does it all for you, basically. But I don't know. I, I might be more comfortable in a Boeing, I think. I'd love to try. But will it be even... Like, in terms of dynamics and systems and everything, could it be more, more, like if it was an Airbus, would it be more accurate? Or would it have more model system? Would it be more study level? There you go. Would it be more study level than the Phoenix one? Because the Phoenix is pretty damn well up there with everything. I don't know. Yeah, I, it, I, I don't know how much a session would be, but it would be interesting. And I would obviously, if I ever went to one of those things, I would YouTube the whole thing. And uh, it'd be cool. I don't know if I could, if I could, if my head would uh, get round staring at those big screens though. 
might be a bit much. But then again, if you know, flying a Airbus or a Boeing with VR with flight Microsoft Flight Simulator is pretty freaking cool as well. Sample collection complete. Yeah, I think so, Anthony. I don't see why not. It can't be that much different. You know, I mean, the procedures are going to be all the same, aren't they? You know, the buttons and the dials and reading the instruments and the autopilot, it's all going to be the same. So if I can if I can land those PMDGs and the Phoenix planes, I don't see why I couldn't do it in a proper simulator. I would have the same rate of messing up as I do in, the, in my home sim. But yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Really. Uh, we're done here, right? We are. Okay. This isn't getting us any closer to home, but it is getting me some money. And I'll get to a point where I'll say, right, I think I've got enough credits now. Let's just jump and scoop the rest of the way. It's like if, if I was to take a, you know, a performance vehicle onto a, a racetrack that I've driven in the sim, I have the, ad I have the advantage of knowing the layout straight away without ever having driven on the real track because like the tracks in like a set of course like competizione for example are all laser scanned so down to the nearest I don't know half a foot a few centimeters whatever all the bumps on the track are there in real life unless they've resurfaced it since oh how far are we away now from the first of April <gasps> 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 1, 7, 7 days. Oh. 7 days to go. And then all hell breaks loose in a set of course. Where am I going? BC2, right? Yeah. So Assuming I'm okay, I will guaranteed be streaming on April the 1st, a set of Corsa. Tune in, guys, for that one. The Nordschleifer. Turn on the rain, and oh my god. A wet Nordschleifer, and maybe even in the dark. That's going to be dangerously scary. <clears throat> oh, really, Simondo? That's cool. But all the way or just while you're in the air? Yeah, Nodge Life is awesome. I've played it in... Um, what's that PlayStation one? Gran Turismo. Yeah, Gran Turismo. I've driven it on that on my friend's... PlayStation. He had a, he's got a, like a budget wheel like I used to have and pedals and he had that thing where you, you put it on this stand and then you can sit on the sofa and you've got the wheel and the pedals on this metal stand thing. Um, and we just played and we just lapped. He wanted me to try and beat his time around the Nordschleifer. Um, yeah, I did. Oh, is that right, Kremlock? What about laser, laser thing on the eye? Would that not correct it so you don't have to wear them? I don't know. They zap your eye with a laser. Bzz, 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 bzz. I don't think I could handle a fighter jet. 
With all those G-forces and... Having to say hello to the breakfast you ate half an hour ago. No. Nope. Literally don't have the stomach for it. <laughs> Pun intended. Yeah, lasers are pretty good now. They don't use lightsabers anymore. Bzzz. Now you can use the force to see. Is it worth going all this way? What if in the next system, guys, we have some really lucrative plantages? We're going all this way for Bacterium Basicula and Fonticulia Campestris. I'd never thought I'd see the day that I would make this journey. But it's another 10 million, isn't it? And I've turned down a few of these already. But BC2 and BC3 planets are going to be close together, I would say. So once we make this journey, it's not like we'll have to come back the other way, right? Right? There it is. So it's not going to be... Yeah, I mean, it's coming down. This one's going up. <laughs> just... <laughs> things that come into my head, honestly. I'm just picturing that, you know that scene in Goldfinger where... The, the laser beam is going up to slice him in two, starting in the worst area. Wouldn't it be a cool if Bond had said, you couldn't turn me the other way, could you, so I could get my eyes done before I die? Can you read the board? Yeah, A, K, P, Z. And now, Mr. Bond, you will die. Hundred and thirteen bios discovered. Cool. Yeah, good old Norma and her expanse. What could we do without her? Yep, we travelled through there, didn't we, on my Rusty Goes East um, expedition. That was cool. I enjoyed doing that one. Yeah, I think things are a little bit more uh, advanced now, Kremlock. You can inquire about it. It might not be cheap, but I don't know if you can get it done on the... like your version of National Health or something. Don't know. I got it offered for free when I had my cataract surgery. Didn't take it, though. I wasn't sure if... I could handle the uh, a flashing laser in my eye. Swipes, swipes. <laughs> That's ha this. This name of this system is how you hang up a phone call in London on your on your cell phone. Swipes, swipes it like you know, swipes. Wipes. Wet wipes. Anyway. Oop. Almost overcooked it there. Right, so we have arrived at BC2. Before Christmas. side. Looks like an Oreo. Right, we'll 
pull up alongside it and probe it. One round the front, one round the back, uh, one there and the one here. <coughs> Did you see what um, Commander Colossus got when he came back from bioscanning? He'd been out for a while. He's posted it on the Discord there. Mapping <laughs> the guy's a nutcase. Came back with... Uh, May host a marked biological. Came back with 22 billion in plantage scanning. <laughs> oh, wow. That's double what Rusty has in his account over eight years. 22 billion. How much, how many plants do you need to scan for that? Amazing. I think he said that it got him to Exobiology Elite One. So yeah, there you go, <laughs> straight to Elite One. I don't know what his what his rank was when he started, like before cashing them in. But yeah, he's on Elite One now at Exobiology. That's that's freaking dedication. That's that's like not doing what I do, which is turning my nose up at stuff like this. Vesicular and campestrous, it's only a million. I think he was just scanning everything. The time invested there though. But yeah, never needs to worry about credits again. For a, not for a freaking long time anyway. Alright, so we've got a nice smooth patch there. Well, let's bring it down. 0.2 gravity again. Let's put it here. There we go, Campestris. Right there. Big forest, little forest. 500 meters, so unfortunately we can't just scan the back of one and the front of the other. Yeah. Really? Not landable here? Are you sure? Yeah, I don't know what his starting rank was, because I think maybe he might have scanned something in the past. <clears throat> it was 22 billion, wasn't it? Hold on, let me double check, guys. I thought it was 22 billion. Mm, where did he post it? Odyssey. Yep. 22 billion, 295 million, 886,708. The two billion was the total for the... Oh, no, you're right, Andy. Sorry. His balance is 22 billion. And the total for that one page was 2.2 million. Billion. Yeah, 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 yeah. But surely most of that 22 billion that he currently has has come from scanning plants, right? Hmm. Yes, no, yeah, it says here, congratulations, you're the first to log, and then it's got a load of stuff. Um, so if you scan something for 7.7 .7 million, the bonus is 31, nice. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yes, you're quite right, the page total was 2.2 .2 billion, and his balance is currently 22.2 .2 billion. Yeah, which I, I think he must have gained most of that from plant scanning, I think. I'm not sure, but still, yeah, 2.2 .2 billion. I, yeah, I just saw the top and I didn't see the word balance, but no, no, you're quite right. Yeah, 2 billion. Still though, eh? Oof.
It's a nice payout, isn't it? Still won't buy you a carrier, though. <laughs> He's got enough balance, though, to get him by. Okay. Right, so we're now looking at the back of the ship. So I'm going to head over here for my first scan. Now on the bacteria here, we want to do... Like, if I do this, this scan here, this one, right? If I don't do that, and instead I just get out and do the hand scan thing, I'm still getting the codex entry, right? I have no idea how long he was out. Yeah, you want to ask him. Just ask Colossus on the Discord. Base value 1 million. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. First partial sample collected. Right, so now we've got that one. Now we know we've got some over in front of the ship here. If that's 500 meters, well, we'll have our second scan then. That forest in front of the ship there. I don't suppose. I mean, she hasn't said it, but sometimes it lags. Blue or green? Oh! Now then, what on earth? We can do this one. Minimum distance reached. Probably the only one in this little pack that we can do. Meters from previous sample. The rest are all blue. <laughs> they will be now. All be blue now. So, I guess maybe we have to head for these guys over there. Because that big forest is going to be too close. Yeah, he is. <laughs> he is grinding it. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And the payouts are pretty damn good. He's got double. He's got double. His, his balance is double what mine is, man. Jeez. This one at the very back. Like I say, the one that the thing that reads out the distance, sometimes it lags. Yeah, baby, look at that. Oh, on the edge as well. Unscannable, scannable. Fine young scannables. Minimum distance reached. See? She's lagging. You traveled over five hundred meters from previous sample. <laughs> Well, yeah, he's a he's an elite exobiologist. He should be an expert now. <laughs> he should know all about the genuses and the species and uh, whatever else. Right, ship is to my the ship is to my right. Is there a Baki on the way? A Bacteria. What is bacteria? It is the rear entrance to a cafeteria. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, 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 I. Oh, George Russell. There we go. And in case anyone's asking, yes, Fernando Alonso. Dirty frickin' git. Dirty driving son of a... Mm. Let's go find some... Oh. Let's chip the paint.
All right, let's do this. Let's get it done. Right, so let's give it a third. Oh, no, it's a rock, isn't it? Yeah. So, 30 degrees, roughly, tilt, and I'm trusting the thrusting. Now this is gold, so we're gonna, we are gonna scan it. Bacterium vesicular scanned. Base value one million. Minimum sample gold. distance five hundred yep. meters. New codex entry. Bacterium vesicular gold. 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 Always believe in the soul. <laughs> I keep repairing the same old one though, Ramoin. Yeah, go and get some kip, get some sleepy, and uh, yeah, get a good one. Do you know what I used to take that would help me sleep as well? Was um, can't remember. Begins with V. Capsules beginning with V, and no, it's not Viagra. Um, although Viagra did stop you turning turning over in bed. Um, no, the um, what's that stuff that puts you? You know, it just relaxes your whole body and stuff. It just it just puts you in a state of ease so that you naturally fall asleep. It's a natural thing. It's uh, not a, drugs or anything. Yeah, something like that. Creme lock. It's Val, uh, no, not Valium. <laughs> no, it's a natural thing. You get it in bedtime teas and stuff like that. First partial sample collected. Um. Oh, frip. Uh, hold on. I'll get it for you. Uh. Right. Yogi bedtime tea contains it. Uh, let's have a look. If I do yogi bedtime tea ingredients. No. Valerian. Valerian root. Yeah, Valerian. Um, you can buy capsules of Valerian root. They're just, they're black, taken with water. Uh, you get them in, what do you call those shops? The nature, natural shops. Those, you know, like, yeah, you know, nature shops, whatever you call them, those. Uh, supermarkets and stuff where they've got all the the healthy foods health food there you go health food shop yeah uh, valerian and uh, I think you take one maybe two capsules I can't remember what it is they're like black and they it if you open the lid of the jar it's, it smells horrible it, it's it's not nice but basically pop pop them in swig them down with water and it will just relax your body it's a natural relaxant, and because you're kind of relaxed, it's not like smoking a joint or anything. You don't feel any different, really. You just just help. It helps your body to relax, and if you get into that relaxed threshold, it will naturally assist your body to go to sleep. I remember I I couldn't sleep. I had really bad sleep for a few days, uh, and I went to the health shop and I they recommended those, and. Uh, I took, I think I took two, two of the capsules, and uh, yeah, I slept like a baby. You can get them in, um, uh, let me have a look. We're a, we're a helpful thing, aren't we? <laughs> uh, 
we talked about Lego and plasticine. Right, so this is what I, I got. I'm going to show you what I got. Uh, so go to that. And that one. Okay, so I believe the one I got was, it looked like this. Herbal supplement. A hundred veg capsules. I think it was this bottle. Oh, it was very, very similar to this one. I don't think it really matters, but I got the capsules. And, uh, yeah, the the ones I got, they were, they're black. And they sm it doesn't smell very good. Or oh, this colour. Oh, yeah, maybe. I'm sure mine were black, though. Ah, oh, no, the black capsules were the ones for digestion. But, uh, yeah, okay, I'm getting it mixed up. The black capsules I used to take like this... Um, contained pretty much carbon inside just pure carbon and what that would do is it would sit in your stomach and because it's super dry it soaks up all the acid and the juices and it gets rid of indigestion it's really quite good but yeah no i think the valerian is actually that color um so yeah i don't know what milligrams would be good though maybe the health food shop would recommend i think mine was either 250 or 500 i don't know But it was about, the capsules are about that size. I think I took two. It's, it's, it's a natural thing, though. It's nothing. Yeah. There you go. I just took two of those. And I didn't finish the thing because I, you know, I had a nice sleep. And I didn't finish the whole bottle. But, yeah, it's just a natural it's, a, it's it's nature's way of aiding you to sleep by re just putting you in a fully relaxed state, basically. And by that, I don't mean, oh my god, I can't move. I can't. No, it's nothing like that. It's just, you don't feel any different other than you're just able to relax a bit more. You barely even notice. But all I do know is I slept. I, I certainly slept. Right. Uh, right, we need two more. Two more circulars. So we'll go over in this direction because it's still smooth. What about this fella? It's reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. How close did I get it? How close did I get it? Not very close at all. Hey! It was... what? It was right there. I haven't landed on it, surely. I think you may have done, Rusty. Don't call me Shirley. This is going to be a tricky one. Yeah, so... <laughs> come for the game and also for health tips <laughs> from Mr. Unhealthy himself. Right, one more. And that's planet number three done. reached you've traveled over 500 meters from yeah sample. it's pharmacy tastic isn't it Gremlock? did i time it right 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 yeah baby <laughs> There you go. Didn't even have to move, Simondo. Cool. Uh, okay, so that's... Uh, 
one more planet to go, and I cannot believe I'll have done four with the same frickin' things on them. I mean... Ugh. Yep, plop and scan. Right, so now we're going to BC3. And then that is this system done. Escape to victory. Four, three, two, one. Get married. Oh no, engage first. Yeah. Engage. Engage. So. Okay, Anthony, have a good day at work. It's 11 a.m. here now. 11 a.m. Not to be confused with 11 a.m. in the morning. Because <laughs> that's, uh, that's another one of those um, pin number things, isn't it? Seven thirty PM in the evening. Hmm. Not to be confused with seven PM in the morning. Can't confuse those. Redundancy. DBX or the ASP? Uh depends what for. Um, this is really handy for the the shorter distances, right? So if you, in terms of exploration, for shorter distances and on a smaller budget, this thing is brilliant. It's got great jump range. It'll land almost anywhere. The ASP, a little bit bigger. It's got more slots, more everything. And also damn good jump range. I think the Diamondback can beat it on ultimate jump range though. I think so, but yeah. I would use... The way I would look at it is if you're doing short range exploration, like you're not going too far out, Diamondback. For your medium range, ASP. And for your long range, staying out there for ages, I'd take the Anaconda. <laughs> That's a, Yeah. But, having said that, you can take the dam back anywhere you can take an anaconda. In fact, more places. Because it'll land in, in better places. But yeah, you could spend five or six years of your life in Elite Dangerous out in the black in a dam and back. You could do it in a stock Sidewinder if you so wished. Good luck with that, but you could. <laughs> yeah. No room for it. AFM used probably, but yeah, you could. No, if you can't fit an AFMU on, because it's not high priority enough, then you're going to have to avoid uh, neutron stars and whatnot. But certainly, yeah, Diamondback's great. Um, it's more limited than the Aspect Explorer, though. But then the Asp is more limited than the Anaconda, so... All three very capable. But yeah, I like it. The Asp is very good, though. If I had to choose, I would pick the Asp over the Diamondback, just because it's... I don't know. It's a little bit bigger. It's got more... slots to put stuff and you mind you that can be a bad thing because the more stuff you cram in the less your jump range if it's got mass that is yeah oh it doesn't have more slots I thought it did I thought it had a couple more 
Okay, what am I mixing it up with then? I thought it had a couple more than the... Uh... Okay. Well, there you go. That makes the down back even better. What about the Scout? Is that the same? Nah, I couldn't be mixing it up with the Scout. I couldn't be. Uh, right. Phantom? Yeah, I mean, Phantom's kind of like the... I've never used a Phantom for an exploration ship, but yeah, maybe. Phantom's very similar to the Python, isn't it? But the Python... Ah, there you go. It's the difference between the f the crate and the Phantom that I'm mixing up. I'm comparing the Downback and the Asp, and I'm thinking of the crate and the Phantom, because the, the, and, the, and the Python, because the Python has got a... E the Python and the crate are the same, except the Python's got one or two extra slots. That's what I was thinking about then. It must have been. Because if it isn't, then I'm just going completely batshit crazy. Which is probably likely as well. But no. <clears throat> uh, phantoms are okay, but obviously the smaller the ship, the easier it is to land. Um, but yeah, they're, they're okay. Asp is fine. I mean, look, I... I I went around all the east section of the galaxy with a anaconda and there was only a couple of times where it was just I had to wait to get a good landing spot <clears throat> whereas in the Asp and the Diamondback they've got a smaller footprint so yeah easier but it's not the main priority because you'll always find somewhere to land and yes, out of the three, the anaconda is the most awkward, for sure. But it can jump like a beast, and it can take a lot of stuff with, on board with it. But yeah, I'll, and the uh, and the asp looks like a frog, so <laughs> Diamondback looks like a wasp, like the vulture. Do we have flatlands right here? Is that a patch? Uh, not really. Kind of ripply. But we'll go down there. Right, so again, this is the last planet with Monticulia and uh, Bacterium. So, there it is. Same gravity as the last planet, 0.20. one done. I mean this this thing right will take it will take the SRB it'll take an AFMU in there partial sample collected you know and it still has a damn good jump range so Really, it's kind of all you need, you know. With it's easier to squeeze for me anyway. It's easier to squeeze uh, two SRVs into an ASP, <clears throat> and you could take four SRVs if you were so inclined on an Anaconda without sacrificing too much. this be enough for our second scan? Let's see if we can. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Russ. Yay.
second partial sample collected. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Not sure what she read out there. Let's go to this other one. To work Sample again. Collection. He's still listening. <laughs> Gain damage. Is that right, Sam Wonder? But you can lose the SRB and not lose the data, right? I mean, if you're if you're in your ship and you leave your SRB outside and you smash into your SRV with your ship and blow your SRV up while you're in your ship, you still keep your exobiology data, right? It's not dependent on the SRV. I think it's just if you're in it. Yes? Like it's not tied with SRV destruction at all. I don't think so. Anyway, uh, right. We've got one more scan to make, I think. Oh no, it's done it. Okay, all right. We're heading back to the ship then. Because we now we want bacteria. The last three bacteria scans. <clears throat> yeah, I remember that time when I was on top of that geyser and, uh, and the SRV and it blew up and all my EXO data just Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah, uh, right, exactly, Simon. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I wonder if it'd be great to get on a, a one of those powerful geysers that blow your SRB about two kilometers into the air. And when you're at the top of uh, of where you're going to be travelling in the in the air, you can just exit, exit the SRV, and let it fall separate to you. <laughs> can that be done? I don't know. 101 stupid things to do in Elite Dangerous. Try this. Right, so, we have got three scans of vesicular, and that's it. And if they're as easy to find as it has been on the other three planets, this isn't going to take too long at all. We just need to stay on the flat bits. Oh, <laughs> didn't see it there. <laughs> Hello, we've travelled a long way to meet you. Oh yeah, if it's powerful enough, it'll shoot you in the air. Yeah, 
I think I've gone up about a couple of kilometers. Oh yeah. As long as you land back on your front wheels with a bit of boost so you can cushion the cushion the fall. Bacterium vesicular scanned. But I I I was doing it on foot as well and I got shot into the air. First partial sample collected. And I timed my boost because the the jetpack doesn't have enough boost to slow you down when you're coming that what do you call it terminal velocity and uh yeah i ended up in a crumpled jelly and that was me gone and all my exobiology data that i'd collected uh, since the last time i docked with a fleet carrier this is no time to lie down and go to sleep get up we have bacteria we need to find Right, so. Just looking at the shape of the shadow, thinking what it could be. Doggy with, no, couldn't be. Right, there's another bacteria there, but I think that's a little bit too close. Yeah, the fascicular is not that difficult to spot, eh? Once you, once you, seen one and you know what to look out for better they're not that difficult to find like there's a whole f freckle face of them here look there's loads of them distance reached you've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample sample you've traveled 500 meters from the sample i get the landing gear down rusty What about this sound on a piano? Ding! Must make a note of that. Sorry. Okay. <sighs> right. There's bacteria everywhere here. Pew! Second partial sample collected. come up with the stupidest joke ever it's embarrassing <laughs> uh, right I, I, okay I don't mind embarrassing myself with a stupid joke um, why uh, I'm trying to form it here minimum distance reached okay You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Why isn't it advisable to sniff table tennis? Because it pongs. And then, that's not quite the joke, you've got to end it by saying, no ping intended. See, it doesn't work. I tried, and it's embarrassing. Oh, it would have been better done it the way around made it with pings and then said no pong intended pong pong ping what could i have done with pings anyway yeah never mind there's no setup when it's ping stupid this is what oxygen deprivation to the brain does It's only Martian if it's on Mars, though. I tried, I know. Sacrifices I make. Sample collection complete. Woohoo! We're done. We can move on to the next system. And if it's the same as this one, it can bugger off. So that was 
40 million we just made in this system. Very nice. Now, we're going to make ourselves one step closer to Dear Guandry. Dear Guandry, having a lovely time. Wish you were here. Yours unfaithfully, Dog. Yeah, 40 million, but these were cheap. It's just that we had. We can make 76 million scanning one plant if we get the right one. If it's a first footfall, if it's Stratum Tectonicus, which is 19.1 million, with the bonus, 76 million. That's for just that one little fella there. But 40 million is based on the fact that these were all first footfalls. There was two on each planet of the four, so that was um, eight in all, and there's a million each. So, eight million in total, but with the bonuses, you get four million for each one million, so you actually get five for each, and therefore, cuarenta milliones, 40 million, which is not bad considering that it's uh, 95 total. No, 40, isn't it? You get It's a million. Each planet's worth two million without the bonus. But you get four million bonus for the one each one million, so that's five and five, so that's ten. Four planets, 40 million, right? Yeah. <coughs> if it's 95, Andy, I'll be happier. Oh, 95 total for Tectonicus, you mean? Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I keep... Uh, yeah, you're right. It's 76 bonus plus the original 17. Yes, so it's 95 million for one Stratum Tectonicus. Yes, Andy's right. And Dee 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 Yeah, I keep thinking it's 76, including the original scan but it isn't 76 is the bonus only yeah not bad huh 95 million do, 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 do. <laughs> Should have scanned a bit more, uh, scooped a bit more fuel, but it doesn't matter. Oh, system scan complete. An orange and two plums. Great. Off we go then. Uh, you will, Kremlock. Don't worry. I mean, I'm only up to 90 million on this. I did have a bit more originally, though, didn't I? Before I bought and engineered this thing. But this trip will pay for everything that we've done. Oh, I know what it was. Yeah, we, we had more money, but we we spent it all on buying, uh, finding and buying grade two, grade three suits and weapons, didn't we? Yeah, that's what we did. Right, eight bodies. Has anybody been here before? No. <laughs> Right, scoop my little buddy and don't get too close to the sun. Yeah, 95 million it is. Thanks. So if you found a tectonicas with a vesicula and a campestris, you busted over 100 million on just one planet. Pretty cool. So let's get the sun away from us. The planet, yeah, the planet, the sun, the sun. Shrinky, shrinky. Let's 
should be enough. Right, let's see what we have. Well, high metal and some icy worlds. Give me some bios. Good bios. Good bio and thanks for all the fish. Yeah, give me some good ones, man. Six on a planet. None, 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 none. Come on, man. Right, this is the high metal. Body one. Nitrogen atmospheric landable. Body one. Meets mapping criteria. Body one. I don't know what that means. Landable with atmosphere. Meets mapping criteria. If it was terraformable, it would say so. It's not. So what does meets mapping criteria mean? Like, they're all mappable. What criteria is it yapping on about? Again, no bios in here at all. God damn. Oh! Body 2A. Hmm. All premium boost materials in system. System discovery complete. First body to map is 1. Give me a sec, guys. Hey, Kremlock. Uh, little thing for you. Don't make it too high. Then you'll get complicated. And anybody else in the chat can, can do this if you want. Uh, right, Kremlin, uh, don't tell me what it is, don't tell anybody what it is, but um, think of a number. <laughs> and when you've got that number, I want you to dub all in your head, just do this in your head, double it. Okay, and now I want you to add six. And now half the number, divide it in, in half. And now take away the number that you started with. And the number you have is three. That's what you've ended up with. Yeah. Just some silly little simple maths trickery there. <laughs> what was I? What was I doing? Oh yeah, leaving this system because there's nothing in here. Yeah, we could footfall here. Do you get? Um, do you get anything for first footfall apart from your name? Do you get any? financial bonus for foot falling on a planet when you're handing in your well that's not Vista Genomics is it I wonder if it adds to rank or anything come on no one's been on this planet ever let's land on it and just get footfall lens lock that's an old protection system isn't it for software way back in the day right well my head seems to be managing but this isn't the most strenuous of games I think what I'm going to try and do after this is go shopping and then see if I can make something happen with Le Mans Ultimate. Le Mans. Lemons. Yeah. I'll, I'm going to end up... I'll drive Le Mans and look like a lemon, basically. Oh, 
Oh, was it that far back? Oh, wow, I thought it was one of the PC ones. I'm hearing noises downstairs. Mapping complete. Scan. No more bodies to map. I don't even know why I bothered doing that. <laughs> but it, that does it get you a little bit of extra credit. Oh, no worries, Kremlock. Basically, the answer always comes to three. Basically, uh, the reason being that you're, you're, you're doubling a number, adding six. Six, and then dividing it by two, and then, of course, the six is divided by two as well, so you, you end up with three and stuff. <coughs> Mathematical acrobatics. Right, so we're just going down here for foot falling. Foot falling. Um, yeah, let's just land here. Keep out of the red and into the orange. You don't get anything for this game, but. Um, Nothing rhymes with orange. So they say. Yep, spinning. <laughs> I was gonna do a joke there about spinning plates, but you know, saucer, sorcery. Yeah, or about a, a, a guy who says, oh, a friend of mine, he only washes the small plates in a, in a cafeteria. He's a sorcerer. Something along those lines. Right, gravity 0.5. Oh, I wouldn't like to be that... Oh, another pun coming up I've just invented. I wouldn't like to be that guy with a double... With a double helping of food on his plate. Oh, doesn't... Well, I've fucked it now. Um, I wouldn't like to be that guy with a... With a triple English breakfast. Um, he's got a lot on his plate. Yeah. See, I messed it up. When I suddenly think of a joke, it's all always in the embryonic stage. And every time I tell one, I feel like I, sh I should remain in the fetal position. No clouds. Yep, we got it. Our feet have fallen. Okay. Let's get the hell out. We are now named. Yay. I keep thinking Rusty Dog's gonna come up on there, but of course that is not the case. Do we have straight flight out? No, we don't. So we're cruising. I've wanted clouds for so long now. Right, uh, cruise. Talking to FDev security outside the building. Excuse me, why can't I get in the back way? Because you have to go round the front here. Oh. Shut up, Rusty, for God's sake. Give it a frickin' rest.
<laughs> I just want to do a guy, a sketch of a guy who's got like both his ears, but he's got another one. He's got, yeah, he's got his normal ears and he's got another one on his forehead. And then just underneath, just write, spell differently, frontier. Just spell it a little bit differently. I need sleep. Animal shaped clouds. Yeah, then back on Earth we'd look at a sheep and go, that sheep looks like a cloud. Actually sheep sheep do look like clouds. I know a cloud that looks exactly like that cow. Wait a minute, what just happened? Oh, we have a discovered system. 55 jumps away from the booble. Let's do another jump. There's no bios in, uh, in here because there's no atmospherics. Dude, how the hell have I been going for five hours now? What? Go shopping. Forage for food. Actually, before we do a scan. Ah, okay. What's the numbers? Well, there you go. Hey, oh, there you go. Watch the show. Jibber the low and down below. Oh. Oh, here we go. Uh, what use would it be now, though, uh, Bon Doodle? It, I remember it was cool. People at Frontier won't even have a clue what you're talking about, to be honest. They're all young'uns. 41 a.m. Me thing atmospheric landable with life. Ooh. 41 a.m. May host a marked biological. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Meets mapping criteria. But it's either going to be... Shush, shush. It's either going to be Bacterium bolaris, 1.1 million, or Fonticulia digitus, 1.8 million. But it's only the one might be worth doing then because it's uh, at worst it's going to be about another six seven million or eight nine maybe i don't know and then i'm gonna have to shut down because my 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 limbs are starting to ache sitting like on my chair like this yeah that's part of elite observatory core does that you can you can ask it to vocalize the stuff. Oh, we've just got the one then up to now. Will it remain for the rest of the system? Answers on a postcard to Rusty Dog, care of Frontier's Frontier Kennels, Cambridge. That's where Frontier are, by the way, not me. Next to the ant farm. System discovery complete. First body to map is 1 a.m. Yeah, and the only body 
really. Right, let's see what's here. Yeah, hi Rick. Um, yeah, I know we just did four planets, right? Each one of them had Vesicula and Campestris together. And with the bonus, that's obviously 10 million per planet, and it was four of them, so it was 40 million. And I'm on my, my crappy account here in terms of balance, so it's only 90 million in the thing. So this one gets me footfall as well, so I'm getting the bonuses. But I don't know, yeah, you're right, it's probably not worth bothering with them, but I'm I'm not coming across hardly any lucrative ones on my way back, and I'm, you know, I'm heading back towards the bubble now, so beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Yeah, your 22 billion balance has, is most of that from plant scanning, though. Like, where did you make the majority of that money? I, I'm assuming plant, planty scanning. But yeah, this is there's only one in this um, system, so I'm I'm just going to quickly do it. There's only one one atmospheric planet with one bio, so quickly get this one done. Shouldn't take too long. One probe might sort this thing out. Mapping complete. No more so it is bacterium bolaris. 1.1 million, so we'll get about, I don't know, six, maybe seven. Oh, Explorer's Anchorage taking a break from bio. It can get real, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> a lot of bio, yeah, K-type stars. I did try on one my last stream to change the star type, but I changed it to an A, but I think yeah, you might have you might be onto something there with the K's. Like if I was to plot my route home and only use K stars. Yeah. But no in my luck I'd I'd miss out some other stuff doing that. I don't know what this one is. M Yep. It's a class. Mm -hmm. And this place is minty fresh. Right. Gravity is next to nothing. So. When we land, I promise I won't say that I mint to land there. Won't do that. Yeah, five to one. Yeah, this is this bacteria is one point one five million. So I don't know whether that ups ups the four million a little bit. You put ten billion into a carrier account, another ten billion personal. Cool. We have some splats. Two splats. And three splats, actually. And four splats in my vision. I've got three here in the middle windscreen. And off to the right, we have another one, which is right where these flashing arrows are now. There it is, pointing to it. That one. So, let's get landed. Two hundred million gives you a billion. Yeah, I was talking about you earlier, Rick. <laughs> I mentioned about the amount you got paid out. How long did you spend doing that, though? I mean, that is some frickin' dedication right there. Uh, oh, oh, it's right there, I was going to say, I can't be that far out. Right, so this is what, oh, it looks very similar to the other one. Polaris. Polaris. 
Bularis, Bularis, whatever. Bacterium Bularis scanned. Bularis. Value 1152500. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. New codex entry. All the paint coming off, man. First partial sample collected. I don't know how the paint comes off. I know it's just through wear and tear and must be through all the hyper jumping and stuff, but still. Where's all the friction that's making that happen? Look. Gonna need a new paint job, man. Any on the roof? Paint loss. Actually, the roof looks fine. The journey hasn't been that long, though. Ah, oh, the paint up here seems okay. On the wing? Oh, the gravity's so... Ah, oh, yeah, we got little bits. A little bit of scrapage. Yep, yeah, the more you travel, the worse that paint's going to get. Until there's not much on it. Ow, that engine's hot. See, that's just extra immersion, guys, I give you. <laughs> right, let's go and get some more bacterium samples. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know why this ship can't keep itself in the air. Bloody thrusters, unengineered thrusters. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Oh, look at that one. That's a beaut. Is that three, three in one, or is that just one with two buddies inside? <laughs> yeah, I'll bet it is, Rick. <laughs> Taking it back to the bare metal. Or whatever composites they use on these ships a thousand years in the future. Yeah, look at this thing. This is cool. Scanning on the moon. Alright, that's two samples. Landing gear may lower unexpectedly. Yeah. If a ship land about to land on your head, what would be so unexpected about the landing gear coming out? Who's unexpecting it? Unless they're saying it would it'll just drop without me pressing the button. Oh particles. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, if they if you're coming at them at the speed of light as well, yeah, it can... I'm surprised they don't smash the windscreen. Right. Where are you going? You've got one more scan to do. Come on, you're too high now. Minimum distance reached. Okay, 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 we're bringing it down, we're bringing it down, we're bringing it down. You're risking a lot there with your shields rusting. Jesus. Right, come out, turn right. There we go, it is done. I am we. Yeah, just because of the crappy gravity. Uh, not crappy, but super low gravity. Sample collection complete. Oh, well, they're supposed to have that creme lock, apparently, but they do have a filter on the glass, because otherwise, yes, you would definitely be blind looking at the sun from that distance, without question. 
the air there is. <clears throat> what happens if your canopy if your canopy breaks? I think it's not on the glass though. But the thing is, if your canopy breaks right at the front, and you need to get home, and you've got enough oxygen, and you jump into the next system, and now you're facing the sun, and let's say you are. Let me see if I can do this. Can I do this? Can I fudge? Uh, okay. Yeah, see, I'm not wearing a helmet here. So, how does that work? If you get your canopy busted out and you jump into a new system to get to your home base, how the hell are you not going blind? Or burning up, for that matter. <laughs> anyway, this planet is clear. We're out of here. Yeah, I just wanted to do this one because it was the only atmospheric landable here. And just get my little, my little puny name on there. Oh, is that right, Samondo? Well, there you go. It's built into the visor, then. <clears throat> That'll be interesting, then. And could a player walk up to the ship? Pilot takes its, its shields off. I walk up and I target specifically the canopy with my laser rifle. Can I specifically blow the canopy out on foot? <clears throat> hmm. That's not something I'm going to be testing now. Just in case you're wondering. Not going to happen. Oh, we're jumping into a big one here. Class A blue-white star. Sunglasses on! Extra pair of sunglasses. On. Silver jumpsuit. <laughs> On. <laughs> yep, yeah, experimentation for the sake of science. Can you target specific ship modules on foot? Oh, it's not that big, this one. I was expecting one of those big, big ones. Okay, nine. Do we have them? Yep, it's fresh. <laughs> Tell you what, I'm going to be quite nervous going shopping. Anxious. <clears throat> it's my first time walking for a week. I hope. And that's after a five hour stream. It'll be okay. I'll take some Lego with me. <laughs> That's the cool thing about what we were talking about before. It's the cool thing with plasticine, is that if you're ever somewhere else, like maybe in a waiting room or something, or somewhere that you're comfortable, just carry some of that stuff with you and uh, mess around with it. Body B1, landable with atmosphere. Oh, three geos. Hey Rick, when you were doing your uh, bio expedition there, did you not ever play the song Having Fun on the Bio? <laughs> that we have to do a different worded version of that. It should be Having Fun with the Bios. Yeah. 
I don't know. Oh, nothing again. Jeez, it's getting a little bit too much now. Oh, hello. Big water you. 1.5 grav. We got this guy. Nothing on it. System discovery complete. First body to map is B1. In your dreams, darling. We're leaving. I cannot be one. Ah, oh, it was it was CCR. Okay, SRB survey and ED buddy. <laughs> Having fun scanning bios. Dee -dee 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 -dee. Jumping out, jumping in. Dee -dee -dee -dee. <laughs> so I don't know. I will check those out, Mister Mister Rick. ED buddy. Or Ed Buddy, if you've got a buddy called Ed. There we go. I did a little bit of the, uh, I didn't use any first footfalls because there wasn't any, but I did do a, you know, that exo, exo mastery to exo biology thing that they have uh, thing. Well, I did that for a few hours and I came back with 763 million, something along those lines. That's Jambalaya, isn't it? Yeah. Jambalaya. Hank Williams? Senior or junior? Hank Williams Senior did that. Uh, I'm so lonesome I could cry. That was Hank Williams Senior. I'm so lonesome I could cry. That's because they didn't have dating apps back in those days. Okay. My favorite Williams country singer though has to be Don. Smooth voice, Don Williams. That guy's awesome, oh, he's brilliant. I know the words to pretty much most of his songs. Yeah. Lonesome Whippoorwill, yeah. For ages I thought a Whippoorwill was a... I, I know it's a bird, but what I thought I thought it was, was, you know those, I don't know what the hell you call them, it's like a, um, like a pylon thing, and it has a fan on the top that rotates round. Might have a little vein on the back of it. I thought that was a whippoorwill. God knows why. I just my my when I was a lot younger, my uh, my my young brain decided, yeah, that's that's what a whippoorwill is. It must be that. Yeah, I've listened to a lot of country. Garth Brooks, um, Tim McGraw, Travis Tritt, Alan Jackson, uh, John. Uh, oh, I like also Brooks and Dunn. Montgomery Gentry. Uh, ba -ba 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 -bum. Pam Tillis I've got a, an album of. What's going on here? Oh, it's blocking it with the A-pillar. Okay. Yeah, I've had my country phase. Still play it actually. I think I had played some country the other day. I'll tell you what I do like. You know Elton John's uh, Tiny Dancer? Well, Tim McGraw did a cover of that. And, oh, 
I prefer it to, to Elton John's version. <laughs> Whoa! Mother load! Anything good? May host a marked biological and has high biological value. Body one. Oh, and has high biological value. Body one. Landable with atmosphere. Oh, I can't do this one today. Right. Rather than me explain what is on or potentially on this planet, it'd be easier if I just showed you because. Because yes. <laughs> because yes, because it's easier. Uh, right, what are we looking at? That one. Okay, so this is what it says about this planet. So, seven, seven signatures that we know of for sure. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine possibilities. If you, take a, if you assume that Contra and Stratum is one of them, Anyway, best case scenario, 24.4 million. Worst case scenario, 21 million. So, yeah, this lot. So, if we only get the cheapest stuff, that's where it'll be. If we get the best, it'll be that one. Oh. Okay, and that's only on this one. What else? Another planet with another seven? I shall call the planet Blake. Blake seven, always. Well, you don't find any and then suddenly you get seven. And not one of them is Tectonicus or any other plant that scores or pays out that high and there are other ones that pay the same or close to what Tectonicast does I think there's some that pay 16.7 million or something like that limbs are not limbs anymore. They're not mine. Oh, getting a little bit achy. And this gaming chair, it has to go. It's not comfortable. Mind you, if I get a comfy chair, <laughs> I might end up doing nine hour streams because it's so comfortable. Uh, right. Um, blah, blah, blah. 1A. You game in bed. Oh. See, this is the thing. I, I've been sitting up in bed a lot and I think it done my neck in. And of course, sometimes when you get a pain at the back of your neck because of the muscle, it can go over to the top of your head as well, which is probably why I'm feeling some of that. I don't know. Yep, yeah, Xbox controller. I only use the Xbox controller for the SRV. And for the external cameras in Flight Sim, the drone camera. That's the only time I ever pick up the SRV. The SRV, <laughs> the Xbox controller. Actually, sometimes it can be used in snowing as well. Yeah, Rick. Oh God. Oh my God. That would just take forever. I mean, you've got to go down and prepare up somewhere to eat and, and a and a drink, haven't you? And come back up and then get started. Don't want to be doing that on an empty stomach. I don't think I can do all seven of these guys. I may have to resume this stream a bit later. I have to, I have to shop. I haven't been shopping for a week because I've been, you know, going through a rough week. So I've not been out. And so my resources are dwindling.
Yeah. If you're looking at Microsoft Flight Sim Cremlock, though, you're going to need a good computer to run it. You know, to run it well. You can lower the graphic settings, of course, but it's it's hungry. <sighs> Those honeycomb things would be cool, wouldn't they? What are they called? Alpha and Bravo? My name's Alpha. I'm Bravo. Yeah, for flying the smaller planes. But you can also get the thing, can't you? The throttles. You can get the Airbus and Boeing throttles on them as well, which is kind of nice. Just use the throttle part. Uh, right, what are we doing? Well, we are surface scanning this thing. after we probe it. Right, which ones are we going to get? And which ones are we going to miss? Is it going to be Concha and Stratum which have two choices? And we're only going to get... Mapping complete. No more bodies to map. Body 1AM. May host a marked biological and has high biological value. Yeah, you said that. Right, so Alioida, Bacterium came true. Concha came true, but we don't know which one yet. Could be Labiata or Anibus. Fungoida is true, Osseus is true, Stratum is true, and Tussock is true. So it's, it's exactly like it says. It hasn't missed any of those out. The only thing is we don't know which Concha and which Stratum. Now, on the Concha, We've got Labiata at 2.3 million, roughly, and we've got Renibus at 4.5 million. So obviously we want the Renibus, if we can get it. Probably not going to get it, but there you go. Uh, on the Stratum, we have Peleus at 1.3 million and Executitus, exe whatever, to, at 2.4 million. So, which one should we find out first? Well, the Alioida is, on its own, 6 million. So, let's have a look at what we're looking for. And I'm going to have to, if I can get through all of this, then it will be the last one for today. Because I'm already a few hours more than I plan to be, given I'm just trying to ease myself back into it. Right, so Alioida coronavirus, there it is. So that's what we're looking for, these things. This is when you get coronavirus at Christmas, by the way. It's called Coronamus, just in case you were wondering. Yeah, and this is what started it off. So we're looking for those. And where is day's time. There it is. Oh, it's a laptop. What's the graphics uh, chip on it? Yeah, we were talking about that earlier as well, the, the, you know, the, the ships to use. Yeah, Phantom did come up. Nice, eh? 76? That's nice, man. Nice build. Yeah, I've never tried a Phantom Exploration ship, but maybe on this account I could do that instead of going for an ASP. As my, you know, my good range um, ship. Instead of using an ASP or something, just go for a, straight for a, a, a Phantom. Why not? <laughs> it came from China. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, my turns out my Anaconda and Asp have got those. Didn't even realise. I, I went shopping for it. When I finally grabbed it, I realised that the ship's I wanted to put it on already had it. Right, I don't know where these things grow, but I've got a feeling that this map that we just looked at, the blue map on the planet, is going to encompass more than just this. 
let's plonk it down here. Oh, right, that is stratum and something else. And stratum and something else. And stratum and something, oh my goodness, okay. Bacteria up front. Right, let's land and get the car out because there's there's a lot here. A lot of the stuff is 150 meter range difference. Some of it's 500, some 300, and one is 800. GTX 1650. That's going to struggle with flight sim. Yeah. I'm not saying it's impossible, but you'd have to lower your settings a lot. I think it'll still be playable, but like I say, you will have to lower the settings. Right, here's our thing. Alioida, which is definitely Corona at Christmas. Let's get it scanned. Alioida Corona is scanned. Base value 628460. Minimum sample distance 100. 6.2 million, baby. New codex entry. Alioida Corona turquoise. Turquoise. Uh, yeah, I'm going to scan this little boy here. With its. Oh, so there's a wind, is there? Right, or are you just flapping those leaves? You just flapping them, no breeze. Well, there's a small atmosphere, isn't there? And this is what they're like when they're fully grown. They've got things coming out of them. First partial sample collected. Now, only 150 meters for these babies. Is that enough? Is it? Oh, not even at the top end there. Nope. Can't do the purples because that's a completely different genus. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over one. Right, what we want to do is do the first one. So it's furthest away from the next one, which is going to be up there. Did we do that? Sample collected. Yeah. Right, so this will be the third one. Now we might not be within range at the beginning ones, but certainly at the end ones here. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 150 meters from previous sample. Right, Stratum, are you going to be Executitus, Executitus, or Palaeus? It's Palaeus, isn't it? I can tell just by looking at it. Never mind. Sample collection complete. Stratum Palaeus scanned. Base value 136200. Minimum sample distance 500 meters. New codex entry. Stratum Paleus, live. First partial sample collected. Ah. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Hey, hey. Yeah, 
because we already did the other type, didn't we? The other stratum, and it was that camouflagey looking thing. And this isn't. I can't move, guys. I'm, I'm stuck on plants. Thank you. Frickin' hell. I don't know if that's enough. Not waiting for the messages to catch up. Oh, not even... Just thinking about plants there, just in general. Do you guys remember? I wish they'd still do these because I do miss them. Do you guys remember the Observer's Books? Those little Observer's Books? The Observer's Book of Plants, the Observer's Book of Cars, the Observer's Book of Fish, or whatever it was. I love those books, they were brilliant. Oh, you're taking the absolute splash here, man. Right, okay. Oh, what does that look like? Don't even say it. Let's go. Minimum distance reached. Yeah, yeah. Minimum distance. Minimum distance. Yeah, it's like bloody Kew Gardens in here. Doodles. Oh, we must have already done it. Thank you. Space cucumbers. Huh? Two. Yeah, two. We need to do a third one, which I'm going to go this way for. Second partial sample collected. Minimum distance reached. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. Oh, seven of them here. This is only the second one. So, 20, 20 something million, 22 million maybe on this. Uh, yeah, 23 million point, 23 point four million is now the the most we can hope for. Assuming that the concha is, whoop, what the hell was that? Assuming that the concha is Sample is the good one. Complete. Yeah, he should eat his heart out because it's aching and breaking apparently, isn't it? All right, so we've got those two done. I haven't seen any other speckies. No, species. I haven't seen any others so far. Just those two, and they seem to like each other because they like to exist together. Bloody hell, what a commotion this is. How was that all about? Uh, 
talk about stopping on a dime. <laughs> Just had some new brakes fitted. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Right. Oh, give me a sec, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Billy Ray Kairisu. <laughs> Don't worry, I know who you meant. Right, how the hell have I managed to, instead of getting in the ship, get out the SRV and bring a tool out? What the hell? Uh, right there. I just don't think you understand. Right, is there anything else in this blue area? I don't think so. Let's just go up and do another. Oh. Yep, I was forgetting about this dude. Let's get the backy done. What I'm interested now is which stra uh which concha is it? We have a choice between. Let's find out. So when we when we eventually see it, we'll know instantly. Quancha. 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 Right. So it's either going to be, if we're lucky, it's going to be this one. Three D starfish on a rock. If we're unlucky, it's going to be that one. I'm going to go with that one. It might be Renibus. This one, 4.572 million. This one, 2.352 million. Yeah. But there are now, we have bacteria. Let's disem wolf, which is similar to disembarking. Right. Get your tool out. And here we have Orasus. Bacterium Orasus scanned. Base value 1 million, minimum sample distance 500 meters. First partial sample collected. 500 metros. I think all the bacteria are 500 meters, aren't they? Mm. So, here we go then. Up, down, and turn it around. Basically flying it like a helicopter, you know, where you just dip the front a little. That's 500 meters, come on, it is. No question. Minimum distance reached. Yeah, I know. You've traveled over 500 meters from previous sample. I'm going to see if I can fix the virus checker on that uh, thing, on that um, observatory core. See if it stops it lagging. Um, what was that, Rick, that you were saying yes to? 
Oh, it might, I can't remember what I said two seconds ago. Second partial sample collected. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure last time I, I used uh, Captain's Log too. That would tell you as well. But I'm sure I had something on screen, and it would it would tell me the distance. Not only to scan number one. I think it was Captain's Log. But if you scan number two over here, it would tell you the distances from where you are now compared to the other two. So you knew that you would be 500 meters away from both. Yeah, because the one, the, the one up here doesn't tell you that though. On the visor, you've got that one, 93 meters on the visor. It just tells you that was the last one. Oh, I, I'm sorry. No, you've got that one as well. Yeah, difficult to see both at the same time, though. Yeah, I'll, have, I'll check them out, Rick, for sure. This is, anything like that, any of these tools, I think they're really cool, and they're always definitely worth having a look at. Yeah, it is a bit Harrier-ish. Right, sometimes I like to keep the the legs down on the ship because it it minimizes the speed stops it from over speeding hello oh we've got a big guy over here let's let's do the big guy right i might be able to do it just as i step off the ship ah oh he's over there i thought i'd cleared him Never mind. Okay, that's the bacteria then. That's that's three out of the four. Yeah, I I do. I like I like all these cool little utilities. They're really cl clever. Sample collection complete. It's like the uh, Odyssey, but what's it called? Uh, material helper. That thing's just amazing. Amazing piece of software. Right, so we're going to go up, get another thermal thing. Let's do it for the uh, concha, so we can get that question answered, because we know what the other ones are. So we need to go up, up and up and up. Why does it say out of range? Oh yeah, so yeah, at the bottom there where it says scan, surface scanner out of range on the on the right side. We need that to just not say that anymore and say too fast or whatever it is. As soon as that message changes, we'll de-throttle. There we go. And then we can look back and we can change the map to Concha. Yeah, that's the one we want. And now turn the ship around. And find a nice smoothie bit. Although not all of them. Some some plants like existing in the uh at the bottom of valleys and stuff like that. Old man packs us hay. Yes, Odyssey Materials ED, Elite Dangerous Odyssey Material Helper it is. It's freaking awesome, man. It's just, it's a Bible of everything. It's like all the materials from Odyssey, Horizons, everything that you have, where you can get them from, all about the engineers, who does what. It's, it's just everything. It's really, really good. Elliot's blog, hey! Yeah, it's it's basically an encyclopedia of just everything that you have. Well, everything relating to materials and engineers, yeah. Yeah. 
like if, for example, uh, let's say you you got a a wish list like where you want to upgrade or engineer. You want to engineer your thrusters, your shields, your power plant, and your distributor, for example, or your lasers. You want to do them all, right? You've got all the materials, right? It, uh, material helper's got a wish list, and then when you gather them all, it'll tell you, and blah, 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 blah. And then it will list at the bottom the engineers that you need to go to in the most efficient order in which you go to them, you know? So it cuts down on your journey time, that kind of thing. Right, so some of these plants do exist at the bottom here, and in some occasions, the codex will tell you, and on some occasions, it does not, because it's a frickin'... Right, so this Conjurinibus, does it say anything? I think I've seen these on the surface before, and if you look at the picture, they look surfacey. And certainly... Labiata. Which will say nothing about that description. Alright. No problem, old man. <laughs> I feel bad saying that. Ah, oh, nice one, Andy. Yeah, it's it's an awesome, uh, awesome piece of kit. And I'm using right now Elite Observatory Core for the exploration stuff. Right, so where are we going to go? I'm going to go to that big bit over here. Because me with canyons, not a good combination. I tend to fool around and sometimes get myself into some sticky situations which viewers find amusing. There's Tussock. Isn't it? Or is it rocks? Oh, it looks like rocks. It looked like Tussock from a distance. They're all rocks. All of them. Yeah, little sticky up rocks. <gasps> no, that's Tussock. I don't want Tussock now. I want the Concha. Oh my god, is it the starfish? Guys, it's the big expensive one. It's the, ki it's the starfish on top of the kidney. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. Turned 50 last year? Dude, I've added another 7 onto that. In November I'll be 58. So, think of that. I'm, I'm heading towards the 6-0. Another year less on, to, on the planet. If I make it to 6-0. They're very good cops, by the way. Hawaii 6 0. Right. Better than the other ones. Alright, so. Don't know why I brought the car out. Low gravity warning. Low gravity warning. It can stay here. Concha. 150 meters. If we can get all the Concha scanned from here, we might be able to do the tussock as well. Oh, look at these lovely babies. It's the starfish. So that means we'll get a definite value on the entire planet without the bonus, which is 23.4 million. Minimum sample distance 150 meters. That's what we'll get without the bonuses. Yeah, baby. Mulberry. Mulberry. Yes, and the other one might be within range it, oh no okay is there another one close by i should have scanned one from the back of that oh even that's not within range uh okay what about you yes
second partial sample collected. Yeah. Recommended not to sit on these, by the way. Yeah, I want to. I just want to leave everything there. No distance reached. You've traveled over one hundred. Because the tussocks there as well. Previous sample. But I need to find another. There it is. No, it isn't. It looked like it from a distance. Yeah. I need to find another concha. And somebody, come on, somebody say to me, what's the matter, Rusty? Concha, find one? There. There we go. Lit up like a Christmas tree. You could look at that and go, yeah, the balls on that. Right, so that one's done. Sample collection complete. Now we'll go up and get the tussock. I believe that's what this is. Watch me be wrong. Nah. Tussock computer scanned. Base value 3472400. Minimum sample distance 200 meters. I always eat whole foods and that I never have anything left on the plate. I ate the whole thing. Uh, what was this one? 200 meters. Awesome. So on our way back to the ship, we, we can bask in the awesomeness of 200 meters. Nice landscape on this one, eh? Not too bad at all. Not too shabby. It's times like this, I wish I had not vision. Oh, did look like a plant until I got closer and turned into a rock. was one close by minimum I forgot it was that close you've traveled over 200 meters from previous sample just about eh? Second perfect sample collected now can we get the third one without needing the car oh look at that ringed planet up in the sky the ring gas giant and that will be probably this dude yep Nice, eh? I like it because it, with the atmosphere, it's just a little bit faded and, and that. It looks really nice. That doesn't look very tussocky. I love the landscape here. Really nice. Nope. It's all concha. So I don't mind minimum distance reached. You've traveled over uh, getting in the ship for the last one. Don't mind that. So that means we've only got two more. After this scan, we've got two more different plants to find. Take care, Kremlock. Thanks for stopping in, man. I am now five minutes away from six hours. Well, I guess my head's passed the test. Jesus. Or has it? We'll find out when I step away from the PC how it fares.
free falling. Okay. Let's get some tussock. Single boost. Hey, down here. Some plants like to exist in these places. Can't remember which. Is it for Texa and stuff? I don't know. Rusty rocks. Hello. What do we have here? This is new. What the frickin' hell is this? Well, what remains? Fungoida stabitis and Osseus Fractus are the other two. Checking. Yeah, good old Tom, Tom Petty. Fungoida, is it? Let's have a look. Yep, Fungoida... The only one that can exist here is st Stabitis, so this one, and it must be the green version. Tightly clustered cylinders, okay. Well, what I'd like to do is land round, around, around, around about here. And get the car, see if I can find some tussock. Uh, can you just take me with you? Is that it? I don't know because it's just bloody dark. It is. Reckon hell. Awesome. Now, can we get a parking space on the top of this ridge here? Oh, come on, a diamondback? Really? Let's try the twisting method. It looks kind of flat. Got to remember that the is on our right, I think. This is perfect because now we get to complete one species and again start another straight away. I don't know what a tussock is. You'd have to Google it. <laughs> it's some kind of leafy plantage. But it's this, basically. That's Tussock Caputus. And by the time we get to the green stuff. Sample collection complete. That animation's done. Look at this thing. Talk remember before I was talking about space cucumbers? Well this takes it to a whole different level. We have uh, <laughs> another one. Cucumberage. I take umbrage at your cucumberage. Oh, look at this thing. Pungoida. So no little green men, but... 
base value 2680300, minimum sample distance 300 meters. New codex entry. Unloaded <laughs> statistics, green. First partial sample collected. Yep, somewhere out there. I'm here. And planet Earth is somewhere in amongst all that lot. About 4,000 light years away. Now, it is th uh, 300 meters, this stuff, to get the next one. And the good thing with it, it sticks out like a sore thumb. Especially if your thumb turns green. So, we need to find two more samples. Getting where the cone was. Right. So now. Oh, I get you. Did you forget you had wings, Rusty? Right, this is not going to be within 300 meters. I wonder if they like existing in these little valleyways here. Because maybe I can keep an eye inside of those. I mean, they're quite, they're quite large, and they stick out a mile. So there you go. And there's some more over there. So, what you see that one on the right, you see the furthest away one? What if that is 300 meters away from the nearest one here? Possible? Doable? You could, you could land a bit closer, Rusty. Yeah, what the hell. Yep, I am wildly in space, I know that. But let me just get me bearings. We've got my bearings. Okay, so. I don't think it's going to be 300 meters, but I might as well give it a try. So we, w we want this with this one here ah, it's it's I don't think we're gonna be quite there really second partial sample collected <laughs> now then can we get 300 meters with this other batch here it might be possible you know Let's go for the jump here. It might just be possible. I ran out of puff. There we go. Could have done it in the SRV, but if I got the same exercise this guy gets. I might not have collapsed last week and I'd have been all right. Yes, baby. These ones at the front, not quite good enough, but look at the green circles. That's because we have greens. Sample collection complete. Right, what's left? Osseus fractus. And 300 meters to get back to the ship.
Yeah, mining. Yeah. It's quite a it's quite a selfish thing to do, isn't it? Mine, mine, mine. <laughs> See, I could have parked closer to the edge. They nerfed what the little the the little sh ship fighters, the little ones. How could they nerf them? They were already crap. What they got them doing now? Firing out water, pea shooter maybe. Right, so we have this, those. Oh, I know where you like to grow. Don't they get like when you have a smooth part or maybe even not even then and there's rocky bits and these guys like to just exist on the rocky bits that are next to the smooth bits. Yeah, I know you. I remember you. Okay. So. Let's go. Let's go and get Osseus and then this planet is complete. So, uppity up we go, in my magnificent flying machine. No, it was the men that was magnificent, wasn't it? Right, so we need to get up beyond the drop zone, I think. Is it? Is it? Is it? Is it? Oh, a bit more. Fifty. Sixty. Seventy. Eighty. What is it? A hundred? No, nope, more. There we go. One hundred and twenty kilometers, it looks like. All right, this is the one we want. This one. Oh, yeah. Plenty. Lovely. I prefer it patchy now. So, we want some smooth areas with bumpy bits. Because this stuff likes to be on the bumpy bits, if I'm not mistaken. And then once I've once I've done Osseus Fractus and completed this planet, guys, I'm going to have to shut the stream down because it's been six hours and ten minutes, and I think it would be better for me if I did. But we will get this planet completed, though. Right, I think I know what I'm looking for here. It's just finding it. We need smooth bits that have got bumpy bits. And the bumpy bits is what we're looking for. And this doesn't look like what I need. Right, you see those? See those where it's bumpier? Well, that type of thing. Cancel the throttle. Hello. Who are you? Yeah, didn't think so. Okay. See, we're just getting all the same stuff here, but this fungoida. Right, so you get these bits that are all rocky 
Kind of like this, but they stretch for a while. Craters as well. Yeah, here. See these rocky bits? Here. They like to exist on, on these. So this is what we're looking for. I don't know which way to go. This. I'm pretty sure they exist on these things. But let's keep an eye out. It, that's if I've got the right species. Or the right genus. Sometimes I find you have to look bloody twice to see them because they can be smaller than you think, but we're only 40 meters up. Oof. And they'll likely just be on the edge, you know, sometimes. Oh, the ship keeps wanting to dive down. We've got a good one here. can be elusive. Yeah. Which is a pain, seeing as how it's the last one here and it's gonna take... It might take a while. So we'll go here, just follow it up. Sometimes I wonder whether night vision would help on some of these, but sometimes it doesn't. The thing is as well is you can't look too far in the distance for them either because they don't pop in until you're really close to them, which is another pain in the eye. Oh, I don't know why they do that though. God, imagine doing this for three of the buggers. It looks like some aliens left a lot of green turds around. is it worth 2.6 it's not worth me melting my brain for though no I, I can see okay yeah I can it's just determining the shape of it isn't it sometimes they're well most of the time they're like a whitish color I don't think they're going to blend in on the brown that much, but... Yeah, we can spin it around here. I wish my ship had a scanner and it would just be beep, 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 beep. Like parking sensors, you know? Proximity. Yeah, comp scanner's not going to help. There's so much other stuff here. It's just going to pick up false positives everywhere. Now this one I prefer doing it by sight. God, it's almost 
looks like it's blurred over at the side there. Bloody fungoida. This is the this is one of the species that literally takes the fun out of fungoida. It will be renamed Goida. Goida, help me. Green. They're not that s small though, they're quite visible. I mean, you can see one from a, a little distance away, not too far, but you can spot them. I've done these before, and uh, yeah, I tend not to miss them if they're there. It's just finding the buggers. This looks like a nice big rocky piece. The lighting system in the leads just sucks, man. Whatever made them think that this had any touch with reality? It's a rock, isn't it? Jesus. From above it just looked... See? Keep the thing off. Seriously, not one. It's not worth it, man. Obviously, for completion's sake, it would be nice. But when you're six hours and 20 in, and they give you the worst one possible, It's just like they're taking the piss. Ugh, a pain in the ass. Ah, we got one. Rick, that means I've got to get two more. Spotting them isn't the issue. It's just bloody fine. They're so frickin' It's like they're so rare. They're like Fabergé eggs, these things. Distance. Yeah, that's right. 800 frickin' meters. 800. Not a problem, is it, really, though? The chance of another one being within 800 meters is so remote. I'll tell you what, though. The night vision certainly helped capturing that little bugger. See, they just like these crumbly, rocky bits. Yeah. I like that it's got all the dirt inside, that's Office cool. Practice scanned. Base value 4027800. Minimum sample distance 800. Oh, it's 4 million this one. New codex entry. Oh. Osseus fractus. Yep, yeah, I read the wrong line. First Four million. Collected. Well, now it's got to be done. They sink as you approach. What the rocks or the or the frickin' um, osseous? Right. So I suggest you boost. This will give us our 800 meters. I'm going to put this on because it helps in that when you find one, the pattern, the shape, 
distance reach sticks out quite well meters from um, with night vision you know it, it'll stick out well so handy in in that regard like the the if you want to call it petals shape The only thing you lose in this mode is the colour, really. Right, let's come out of here. I just want to find some big rocky areas. Maybe in and near around these dips. Oh. Stop, stop, stop. Not a hundred percent confirming that one yet. Imagine f spending time, like 20 minutes, finding one, and then it turns out to be the same one as the one you just did. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. I don't think I would want that. The thing is that the uh, the rocks they sit on, kind of like this stratum here, that they are coloured very differently from the rocks. So they should be fairly easy to uh, to pick out. Yeah, let's have a go over here. I don't know whether this is the way we came from or what. Thing. That skimming was too close to the ground for my liking. I'm trying to pull up and it's difficult. Now, again, with these, they are a pain in the ass to find. They are. However, they do grow in these very specific places. So at least you're not just looking around aimlessly. There are specific places where they will go, or will be, which I guess is cool. I'm going to scan this guy because I don't know whether I actually did do what I don't think I did. Oh, maybe I did. Yeah, when well, I scanned the last one, probably. Really? Unsuitable? Come on. Well, I ain't moving very far. I'll jump out the cockpit if I have to. Come on now. Right, there's number two. Oh, that's cool, Rick. Yeah, no, I'll definitely be checking it out. Because, I mean, we're not going to get all the way back today obviously um, so maybe for the next time we come come on to this account we can uh, we can be using those tools and displaying them and showing them in action and stuff. Partial sample collected indigo yep into this little sampler, Indigo the data.
Right, one more guys, one more. Let's boost away so we're not anywhere near where we are. And we're going to boost in the heading of 290. Here we go. Big boosters, or oh, yeah, no, don't want too much speed. Big boost with crappy shields at low level, not a good mixture. Now, was that one near a near near a uh, a, a, a ditch kind of thing, a dip? You've travelled over eight hundred meters from previous sample. I wonder. Even on these little ones, they can exist as well. I have seen it with my own two eyes. I'm skipping a few, but... I've got some knobbly ground here, so I'm going to take my chances. Oh, it's another cucumber lizard. Using my peripheral vision here more than I am looking ahead. Well, if we get this last sample, then that's seven bios done. E. That's not bad. stratum here though. It's kind of put me off. Just in case there's one mixed in with the stratum somewhere. <laughs> My descriptions. Oh yeah, yeah. Well they look like they look like cucumber lizards. Because some of them look like they've got little stubbly legs or something. And they're definitely cucumberish. But enough talk about cucumber, that's just word salad. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not saying I spotted one, because I didn't. But there's a few bumpy areas here which I didn't want to go past. Alien sick. Okay. So we'll make our way over to this bridge and if there's anything in between. But this is the edge of a crater here, so let's check it out. Ah, bloody stratum again. Stratum with Stratum. By the way, crummy joke incoming. <laughs> if you ever see one of these bios, these green bios, jumping up and springing into action. Ah. <laughs> uh. Jason Stratum. No, see? That didn't work. Or maybe it did. I don't know. Right, anyway. Oh, hello. Edge of crater. Ridgy bit. Nice. 
No, look again. No. Stratum. Nobody got my Jason Statham joke. It was that bad. <laughs> People have committed harakiri. Uh, Want to try a refresh? F5, just F5 your your browser. What do you mean by stream doesn't load? It's still working, right? Because I'm not getting any issues on my OBS here. Wow. This ship has got no uh, pull-upmanship. Oh, it's a bacteria disguising itself as a fungi. Come on, one more. The fact that I've got the other two scans makes it even worse that I can't back out of this one now. Ugh. There's going to be another Taken movie, but this time it's going to be his mother-in-law, and so the movie's entitled Brought Back. True, true. Uh, right. There's so many ridges and so few opportunities to find one of these freaking things. sake. I wonder how many I've gone past. There must have been somewhere I've just not seen and gone past them. Like maybe there's one right behind me. Dun, dun, dun. There's lots of ridged Ridgy bits here, but no. Oh, these bloody stratums. We need to find some longer ones, don't we? Some bigger ones. These patchy ones are no good. saying there was one here, but there wasn't. <sighs> Santa Margarita Caramanacci. Just 
One more. It's a good thing you don't have to find five samples, isn't it? Oh, God. Come on. Do we just need a fresh batch? By boosting. What if I was to dip down five meters and it would suddenly spawn in? <gasps> no. No! Frickin' Tectonicus again! We need to be in a Tectonicus free zone. A part of the map where it's green for Osseus but not for Tectonicus. Ah! Oh, welcome back, Gain Damage. You've missed nothing. <whistles> Next time I come across a uh, fungoid, what's its face? That's it. We're skipping it. If for one million you get four bonus, so two million you get eight bonus, so four million you get sixteen million bonus? Could that be right? What if we've just been too high and they've not been popping? This is ridiculous, man. Just stop. Those ones over there, it could be that the thing... Well, yeah, I was going to say that it hasn't popped in yet, but the stratum has. So, yeah. Jesus, elusive. And the rest. I know, gain damage. Unfortunately, this is nothing new for me. I didn't plan to be here this long. My head is starting to hurt now. I 
so I just hope this last one is quick. I could easily just land and find the third one in the next session. But I probably won't do that, I'll probably end up... If I land the ship now, I'd probably just do it in my own free time when my head's feeling good again. Because if I screw my head up too much, I won't go shopping and then... Yeah. Nothing has to be this elusive, really. There's no need for it. Tectonicas, which is worth a lot more, is frickin' everywhere when you land on the planet. It's everywhere, all over the place, and this piece of crap. Be, might be an idea. Right. I wonder if it's possible to create a new instance and have some pop in in different places. How is it that the, the last one is always the bitch? Always. Christ. Where's my gun? Shoot the bastard. So nobody else can claim it. <laughs> oh, it was just pure luck, Simon, though. Just... Sample collection complete. Percy. Perseverance. Twenty three point four million without bonuses. There you go. Uh. And there's no other planet in this system that has bios. Right, guys, I'm done. I am going to try and go shopping. And then I'll come back and 
if, 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 if my head's up for it, I want to showcase the Le Mans Ultimate racing sim and uh <laughs> yeah you'll see how how not good i am at keeping the rear wheels uh stuck to the track 6 hours 47 minutes i thank you all for sticking with me and uh hope you had a good morning evening whatever Started this, what, seven-ish, half seven-ish, I don't know. And it's now half past one. In fact, if I go onto my channel here. Oh, 7 a.m., 6.51, I put up the notification. 6.51 in the morning, it's now 13.38. That's crazy. I'm out of here. Take care, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the company. And I will catch you next time. Mm. Oh, I'll check that out, Sam Mundo, yeah. Cheers, guys. Bye for now. Roll those credits, baby. Update it again, because I'm having a hard time keeping up with all you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.